been talking about what uh, we're expecting to be uh, a correction this year it hasn't happened yet or you know you see a little uh, little spots of it but uh, we're expecting something a little bit bigger i'll let vince talk a little bit more about them we've got four great speakers today including our very own vince mora we will each go for 45 minutes since we're running a little bit over time we we're supposed to start at five after the hour with vince I'm going to give him a quick introduction and uh, we'll get going with today's session. Vince Mora, as you know, is our head trader here at Trading Wins. He's been trading professionally for over 30 years. During that time, he has been coaching and training as well. His focus over the last 10 years has been on that coaching and training aspect of things. Um, I'll let him tell you a little bit more about it. Let me know if there's an echo that you're noticing. If there is, we'll get rid of that. Vince. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank well, you. We're finally here. Spring yes. trading kickoff 2018. Yeah. What have you got for us today? Well, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, protection strategies. And, and th this is an interesting time, as I was saying, because um, I think we're at a point where we're sort of in between, uh, in between that bull market run we were having and a bear market. We're sort of in no man's land right now. There are signs that things could um, take a, a much more serious turn to the downside, uh, but we could also go higher from here. So in that in-between period, I think this is uh, a time where you really have to be a little more careful and try to protect uh, what you have rather than focus so much on, on growing your account right now. Once we get a clear indication of where we're going, then we go back to focusing on, on uh, you know, uh, growing our account. But uh, for now, I thought I'd share a couple of uh, protection strategies with you. Yeah. So uh, as Ro was saying, I am Vince Bora. I'm the head trader here at Trading Wins. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. We're glad you could be with us here today. We've got a, a great lineup of speakers. Um, aside from myself, uh, Rob Booker, Dave Aquino, and Jeremy Whaley will be here as well sharing their content please do remember that trading can be risky so please don't trade with real money until you're completely comfortable with the system you are using uh, michael yes this is being recorded we will be sending a recording out um after the uh, the event uh, so in today's presentation what i'd like to focus on is i'm going to talk a bit about bear markets and uh you know what's happened in the past and um, and and then really focus on whether or not you know we we believe uh, a, a bear market is imminent and by imminent I mean sometime within 2018 I am going to share a couple of different protection strategies with you and then uh, share with you a few tools that you could use to not only effectively trade in this type of market but really in any market they, they are very helpful. And then hopefully we'll have some time for uh, questions at the end. If anything comes to mind during the, the presentation, by all means, type it in. Uh, Raul will be here. He'll be monitoring the questions and will interrupt me if there's anything uh, that we should be covering immediately. So let's talk, start talking about bear markets. Um, you know, you... You hear this a lot uh, on Wall Street that uh, a lot of pros say bull markets don't die of old age, meaning they can continue on. And we've certainly seen this recent one carry on a lot longer than than the average bear market. We're at about the eight, almost nine year mark uh, in this bull run. So it is a good time to start looking for those signs of a top. And um, we may have already seen it. Uh, when I get to the technical portion of this, we're going to go through a number of things that uh, we'll, we'll highlight that we've, we've potentially already seen that. Um, but if we look at history and look at the 12 bull markets that have happened uh, since the 1930s, obviously they've all been followed by a bear market. That's the way things work. And the technical definition of a bear market is a downturn of 20% or more. We're not quite there yet. Have we seen 10%? Yes. We're not quite at the 20% mark, um, but really we should be able to spot uh, a bear market before we drop 20%, and that, that's really what I want to focus on today. Now, the average uh, decline during a bear market um, 
since the 30s has been about 40 percent the dot-com bear market decline that we saw in 99 2000 was about a 50 percent drop and and at that time it felt like the end of the world right uh the mortgage crisis was a little more the s p actually pulled back about 57 percent and um we talked about uh in the past about you know my thoughts on any bear market coming up and and, and the degree of it and i i think uh not only will we see it uh but i think it's going to be epic as I've, I've said in the past i think 50 percent drop is a given we could get down as low as 70 or 80 percent uh and i don't mean to scare you but realistically, that's what I see, and that's what I'm going to be talking a, little, a bit more about here today. But <clears throat> the focus at this point with your trading should be um, in trying to anticipate this. And uh, are there signs, are there clear signs that we may be at that point where that bear market is upon us? Well, there's a few signs that I want to share with you today. First of all, <coughs> excuse me, extreme optimism. So the more bullish and optimistic and confident the investing public is, the riskier the market becomes. Why is that? Well, because it's it's common sense if, if you think about, about it. When you're confident and you're optimistic about the future, you're going to be putting money into the market. But, you know, very few of us have unlimited resources. In other words, we're going to get to the point where We've bought everything we can, and we just don't have any, any more money to put into the market. And when you get to that point where everyone's fully invested, uh, the buying ceases, and, and that's when we start putting in the top. Now, what are the true signs of extreme optimism? Well, there's a few. You could look for bullish headlines in the news, such as what we've seen recently in Barron's. There was a Barron's cover story uh, where the title was Next Stop, Dow 30,000. Usually that, that obviously is a, a sign of extreme optimism. There's the fear gauge, otherwise known as the VIX, which is the CBOE market volatility index um, that you should be keeping an eye on. Now, signs of, uh, <clears throat> of extreme optimism is when it's at all-time lows, and we, we've seen it hold steady there for many years, right, throughout this bull run. Recently, we've seen it come off those lows, which is really interesting. And thirdly, uh, increasing consumer confidence measures. You know, there's a number of economic data points that we look at. But if you look at the conference board's February survey, it was the highest reading in 15 years. And although one month isn't a bear market make, it certainly is getting some attention. So there are signs, there's definite signs of extreme optimism it still becomes a matter of timing when that that drop will happen for for us from a trading standpoint but that's where the technicals come in and i'll uh, i'll move to that in just a moment another sign of a bear market is higher borrowing costs right and we already know that the fed has already started to hike rates not only that they've already told us they expect at least three more rate hikes this year and potentially to not just next year but probably the year after that so we know that going forward rates are going up what does that mean though and why is that a concern why is that a sign of a bear market well because when higher rates go up well, when rates go up it slows down the economy right it it, it makes uh the, the business environment a little more difficult in other words companies struggle to um to increase profits during that time, which usually results in lower stock prices, right? The other thing is that higher rates make uh, debt more expensive for everyone, not just businesses, but individuals, right? And trying to carry that, that, that uh, becomes more of a burden, which ends up slowing down consumer spending. So it's sort of uh, that snowball effect that happens. And that's why when you see a bear market, uh, it may start off with just a few signs, but then it rapidly declines and snowballs on itself. And usually you see an exaggerated move to the downside because all these things sort of fall in line and feed on, on 
each other. Another sign of a bear market is the increased risk of a recession. And the reason why I'm saying increased risk of a recession, not a sign of a recession, is because the markets, the equity markets, are a forward-looking indicator. In other words, you're going to see stocks pull back and drop way before you're going to hear that we're actually in a recession. And we may have already started to see that right now. As you know, since February, the markets have been uh, pulling back. <clears throat> and so that, that may actually be the point where we're at. Now, the actual sign of a recession or, or what leads us to believe that there is an increased risk of a recession is a slowdown in either the manufacturing or the services sectors or, or both. And this is where I think that the, all this talk about a, a potential trade war can really have a significant impact because if if it, it this does turn into a trade war, then the manufacturing sector and the service sectors are going to take a major hit, and that will lead us into that recession. That's my belief. Um, why are, are recessions bad? Well, because they cause job losses, right? Uh, slow down in consumer spending and lower corporate profits. Again, that that snowball effect where it becomes more and more difficult, not only for, for companies, but individuals. Okay? Another sign of a bear market is when you see the same group of stocks that have led the bull market higher, suddenly start rolling over and start pulling back. And we've seen that with the likes of Facebook, Google, Apple, Nvidia, Boeing is a great example, right? All of these, helped us that the tech sector uh, drive this bull market higher. Uh, all you need to do is look at a, a chart of the NASDAQ to understand that. But now, now we're starting to see a slightly different picture. And I'll, I'll show you this when we bring up the charts in just a moment. And lastly, another sign of a bear market is what we call market breadth. Now, market breadth is a, a technical uh, term uh, where... What we try to do, do is gauge the direction of the overall market by looking at the number of companies that are advancing compared to the number that are declining. And a great measure for this is using the 52-week lows and highs. So whenever you have an environment where there are more 52-week lows happening on a daily basis than 52-week highs, that's a very, very reliable indicator of an upcoming bear market. Now, just to put in perspective, the last couple of days on the NYSC, if you look at Thursday's totals, new 52-week highs were 25. New 52-week lows, there were 128. Yesterday, this Friday, new 52-week highs were 16. New 52-week lows were 215. Now, yes, those were two strong down days. We dropped about 725 points on Thursday a little over 400 on Friday. But really, if you go back and look at the market breadth, since about the 13th of March, um, the middle of the month, uh, we've really seen a consistent trend of many more 52-week uh, lows compared to 52-week highs. Okay, so that, that really, it has become a trend now. And that's something to think about. So let's bring up the chart here and uh, go through some of the technicals. Now I wanna use the index charts here. <clears throat> um, we'll start with the Dow. So here's, you know, when the, the bull run was in full effect here up until that, that uh, beginning of February where things took a major turn. Now, it wasn't so much this drop that was the concern or basically a sign of an upcoming bear market but it's more the attempt at a recovery and the failure of it not once but twice here and really what we've seen now is a shift from higher highs and higher lows to lower highs and lower lows okay so that shift has already happened and we've already um, made that turn so now this is no longer what we can call a bull run. I mean, if we look at the weekly or the monthly charts, right, 
they're still not bad. They're still okay. We, we can still recover from here. This is why we can't say with 100% certainty that we're in that bull phase. And technically, we're not going to be in that until we see a 20% decline. Okay. But from a daily charting standpoint, it's a concern. And the real reason why it's a concern, and the mo monthly chart to me really puts it in perspective here. If you look at this, at this point, it looks like a minor blip, right? A minor pullback. Uh, and we can certainly turn around and, and continue the run higher. But the one thing we're lacking here is any sort of support. I mean, if you look at this, the only time we really get into any sort of support is down in here, which is in the 182 area. Uh, even if we say 185 around there, we're, we're talking about going from 23,500 on the Dow down to about 18,500, right? We're talking about another 5,000 point drop before we ever find any real support. Okay. And that's what makes this a little more likely here. Uh, and, a, and a lot more concerning because if we drop that much we're well into that that 20 percent or more area and, and are into that that bear market officially so that's something to to look at if we look at the spies here same sort of picture right and let's go back to the daily and what do, what do we see well we've definitely got lower highs and lower lows as well both the dow and the s p are at this point now where there is a small amount of support here but if it gives way the next support level is much lower okay so there's a real potential here so what are two things that you can do to help protect yourself because like i said in this environment we're at that point where we're not in a runaway runaway down trend here where we could say any pullback is a shorting opportunity and we're just going to look for proper short setups going forward we're still in this area where from that initial drop in february if you mark the highs and the lows we're still just gyrating back and forth within that high and low we haven't breached either one we are much closer to the lows and in much more danger of breaching that than the highs but we're still we're still just chopping back and forth in this zone so <clears throat> this is the time where I think a couple of things you can do to protect yourself are one, certainly scale back, not only on the number of orders you place, but, but the size of your orders. Because this again is a time where you wanna preserve capital more than you wanna look at, at how much profit you can make, okay? As if you can withstand this type of area here, once we break out, whether it's up or down, then it's, it's going to be much easier for you to trade and, and continue to grow your account. <clears throat> so um, scaling back is one, one thing. The other thing you can do is really manage your stops properly. And normally what we would say on any trade is to use the most recent pivot low as, a, as an area for your, your stops for a long trade or the recent pivot highs for a short trade. You might want to tighten that up a little okay um <clears throat> so what <coughs> excuse me one of the things you can do is switch to a um a two bar trailing stop for example okay now in some cases if the bars are very wide that's going to be a little more difficult that's still going to offer too much risk so you have to look at this both from a numbers perspective as far as how much risk are you willing to take you know how much pain can you withstand on that particular trade and mark that area and put your stop there or um, use something like a two bar trailing stop because in environments like this where you have much bigger bars much more volatility putting your stop above or below the most recent pivot is usually going to be much farther away so you really really want to tighten up your stops and the other thing you want to do is use the basics of technical analysis to really really find those areas where there 
may be support or resistance uh, so that you know what the, the important thresholds are uh, where this thing can either bounce and recover or run away on us. And, and we're at one of those points right now here on the spies. Uh, same with the Dow. So these lows in February are absolutely critical. But if we give way here where we are now, this area of congestion right in here, if we drop below these lows here, and what, what you can do to draw it a little more effectively is take the, the low end of that congestion area right around there, which comes in right around 255 here on the spies, right? If we break through that, there's no way this low is going to hold. I mean, realistically, it's not a, a strong area of support. So if we break through here, chances are very high that we are coming down to the next level of support, which comes down in here around 245 area. Okay. So having or using these tools of drawing these trend lines to identify what your areas of support and resistance may be, okay, are, are much more important now than they would in any, any other um, market environment, okay? And um, if you're trying to take advantage of this, so for example, if this on Monday drives below this, this area of, of uh, support here, Okay, and now we, we think pretty logically that it, it's going to come down to around 245 here. So we're going to take a short on this. You know, you can put your stop, <clears throat> excuse me, right on the other side of that, of that support zone, right? Right on along the other side of that trend line, right? Uh, that way, if it does a quick turn on you, it's a very, very small loss, right? So you've really have to tighten things up here overall that should be your goal your theme is to be a little more conservative than usual to do whatever you can to protect your capital and once this either breaks down or moves on to new highs then we can revert back to our usual activity level of activity our usual sizing that we use all our usual basic money management plan and trading plan at this point, we've got to be a little more focused on protecting ourselves. Now, another way to protect yourself is to just try to find the best of the best stocks to trade with. Because in any market environment, there are going to be stocks <clears throat> that perform extremely well, even though the market's pulling back, or are extremely weak, even though the market's going higher. And as I always tell my members, um, if you're going to have, say, a portfolio of 10 positions, you don't want all 10 in one direction because at some point there's either going to be a minor pullback or uh, something like this happens where it's a little more significant. But you always want about eight stocks, say, during this bull run that we had. You know, throughout here you should have had eight positions to the long side, but at least two uh, of weaker stocks to, to the uh, bottom. That way, when you get a turn like this, you may get stopped out of most of your long positions, but your your couple of shorts will will uh, balance things out, okay, and make up a qu quite a bit of that loss you saw in the uh, longer positions. So here, when the market's dropping, you want to look for strength, okay, and there are there are still pockets of strength out there. And we've talked about stocks like Amazon and so on that continue to roll. But no matter what, there are charts out there. Now, this is the Tactical Trader platform. And in, in here, there are a couple of tools you can use uh, to also help you not only with your protection strategies like the stops. And I'll, I'll give you an indicator that they just added that you can use for that. But also to find some, some very, very strong candidates to trade and one of the tools you can use is the seasonality tool that they have here seasonality <clears throat> will give you uh, sort of a forward look uh, to in, in order to find stocks that 
tend to do well in one particular month or another, okay? So, for example, um, let, me, let me switch. Let's go to Amazon here for a second and switch to the seasonality tab and just show you what we're looking at here. So every, every bar is a, is a different month. And in, in this case, we're going back to the year 2000, right? So for the past 18 years, if you look at any particular month, like let's look at the month of April, for example, 72% of the time during the month of April over the past 18 years, Amazon has gone up an average of 9%. So that, that shows you strength, okay? Now, Amazon's gone up pretty much straight up the whole time, so it's not, not a surprise. But you can go through charts and find uh, particular months that are extremely strong for that particular stock. Mark that date in your journal, and then that's what you want to focus on. So since we're heading into the month of April, what we want to do is run a scan to see what we can find that is particularly strong or does extremely well during the month of April. And they have a scanner built into this. If you look at the far right here on the toolbar, the green line here for seasonality, I'm going to bring this up. And <clears throat> this scanner uh, you can use on any market. Now, I'm going to use the NASDAQ 100, but I'll, I'll show you. You can use the S&P 500, Russell, Dow 30, Forex pairs, cryptocurrencies, you name it. Uh, NASDAQ 100, okay, on the monthly time frame, I'm looking for a minimum of an 80% chance of it going up during the month of April, a minimum of 2%. I can uh, choose the date, like how far back I wanna go. I'm gonna use 1990. And I can also narrow it down by price, right? So if I wanted say stocks that only trade between $50 and $100 a share, I can put that in here. I'm gonna leave it open for now and I'm gonna run the scan. Now, A, what you're gonna find is not only are these scans handy, they're extremely quick. Um, and it, it, it popped up three stocks for us. One is actually PayPal, and it's showing a 100% chance of going up in April, an average of about 6.1%. Let's bring up that chart here. <clears throat> there it is. There's 100% here now. The thing about PayPal, it's a newer issue. So it's important for you to always look at this date up here in the top left. So this is from 2015. So, you know, to me, that's not as, as comforting. Uh, knowing I'm only looking back three years. So yes, for whatever reason, during April, July, and October, this thing seems to do well every year for the past three years. So, you know, we may look at that chart of PayPal and see some real strength there and actually take a trade in April anyway, even though we're only looking back at three years. But let's look at, at some of these other candidates. So MDLZ, now this one goes back to 1990. So we're talking what, you know, a lot of history there. What is that, 28 years? Um, during the month of April, right? 88% of the time in the month of April over the past 28 years, or actually this is back from 2001, um, up an average of 4.1%. So that's fantastic. That's a great starting point for you to look for strength. Let's look at MELI. Same thing, 80%, an average of 12.4% move. So then if we just switch to the chart here, right? There's the monthly chart, definitely showing some strength, right? But, you know, you want to go back and look. And, and, and so this one's pulled back as well. So it may not be the greatest candidate right now, but this is the kind of thing you want to look for. You want to look for strength, okay? And the seasonality tool really makes it easy for you. Uh, during a bull run, as you know, you're going to get multiple setups, right, for trades because everything's going up. Everything looks great. During those times, you can use the seasonality tool to whittle it down and only select the best of the best, right? So it's a fantastic tool. Another thing you can do is sort of pick your spots in this, in this type of market. So uh, they also have an earnings tool here. Uh, this is the scanner for it. 
I'm not going to bother with the scan. Let me just go to uh, the earnings tool here and show you. So what this does is show you, going back again, if you look, and you can choose by quarter. I'm going to leave it on Q1 here. And going back from 2013 until 2017, all the Q1 earnings reports, what the company did one day after earnings, three days after earnings, five days after earnings and seven days after earnings. So, uh, you know, looking at this, I'm never one to trade an earnings report, at least not heading into earnings. But after that earnings report comes out, you can go back and take a historical snapshot here of what they do normally, how they perform after earnings. And, you know, earnings is a unique event. It, it doesn't always go in line with what the overall market does. So this gives you an opportunity to take advantage of that next week after earnings, um, depending on the historical performance for that particular stock or that particular quarter. So it's a fantastic tool. All right. The other thing, going back to those stops where you want to tighten your stops, uh, Tactical Trader recently added an indicator here known as Super Trend. Okay. So the Super Trend can be used for both identifying trade opportunities, but also as a stop mechanism. Now, if you use this, what I would recommend is going into the settings and the default is 10 and 3. I would move the three down to a two that tightens it up a little you can go down to one you can see the line move here and really tighten it up but that's a little too tight i think uh at this point um you can use the the setting the factor of two now you can change that on the fly okay what i mean is let's say that you know when when price crosses from below to above this line and turns green and you want to use that as a buying opportunity or whatever. You use any strategy you want to get in. Once it takes off and makes a sizable move, if you want to tighten your stop even more as, as that move continues, you can just go into the settings and reduce it to one and tighten it up even more. Okay? Totally up to you. It's a personal preference. But I like leaving the length at 10 and the factor at 2. And it, it seems to do a very nice job of keeping you in that run when there is a run, but getting you out fairly quickly when it turns on you, okay? So those are, are a, a, a few tools that you can use. So again, this is the time, uh, type of market environment where you really should focus on protecting what you have more than looking for big opportunities. Uh, ahead. And so um, with that, what we've done is we've put together a couple of uh, packages for you here. If you go to tradingwinds.com forward slash spring, that'll get you to this page. And I'm actually going to just bring on Raul again, and he's going to walk you through what uh, what, what this entails. Raul? And she took away my bit of my thunder when I was going to say, this is the market where you should be protecting yourself first. Yes. <laughs> before looking for growth. Um, what I did want to mention is we have a live training course coming up. Vince, you talked about uh, two protection strategies, scaling back, as well as the two bar trailing stop. You're going to share four more mm -hmm. during that course next Saturday, exactly a week from today. Right. Uh, you're going to learn how to use hedge products like the VIX, VXX, uh, married puts. You've been big on married puts now for quite a while. Yep. Uh, you're also going to get 30 days of mentorship by Vince Mora, nightly videos with uh, trade ideas. Again, all in that same uh, spirit of mm -hmm. making sure that your account is protected first, growth second. I think if you take care of that first part, the growth will happen on its own. Right. And, and you know, we're going to get to that point where the market's trending strongly in one direction and, you know, volatility settles down and it just gets easier and easier. Uh, we offer a 30 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. I wanted to do 29. Vince said, no, let's do 30. <laughs> so we, I, I, I conceded on that. The package on the right, uh, because we're both movie buffs, we call it a double feature. You're going to get all of what I mentioned on the left, as well as the tactical trader platform that you notice 
uh, that Vince was demoing just a couple of minutes ago, including the seasonality tools, including the earnings scanner, all of that you'll get for a month as well. And that's just for an additional $7. Again, same thing, uh, 30 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. Before you ask, a lot of people say, when I get a new charting platform, do I have to pay for data? In this case, you don't. Real-time data is included at no charge. Uh, there's no software that you need to upload. You can use this from a PC. I believe it's uh, compatible with an iPad as well. Um, a lot of people that have tried it from our service uh, have said a lot of positive things about it. So I think you'll really enjoy it. Tradingwinds.com slash spring. Um, get it now. Either of the packages, left or right, Live training coming up on Saturday. Vince, you're looking at the screen and smiling. No, I'm, I'm just seeing a number of questions. Yeah, okay. and good questions that I'd like to get to. Yeah, I thought you were going to ask me questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get to the questions. Uh, if you have All questions right. about the about either of the offers, you can put them in the chat box. I'll uh, answer those, and Vince, I'll get you to answer the more technical questions. Sure. Jose was saying Vince using a line chart to support would be best to recognize if a hold or breaks instead of candlesticks because sometimes it's hard to read support or resistance. Yeah, absolutely, correct. it's great. I mean, we, we've used it in a lot of our market chats that we have with our members and so on. We've talked about several ways to use that and it's absolutely important, uh, very, very important. Um, so you should use uh, line charts uh, at this time. They work very well. Our friend Karen's in uh, New Smyrna Beach says, Vince, uh, to roll the training, excuse me, we'll focus on the seasonality and earnings tools as well as the hedge products. Karen, for you, we'll make a focus on anything you'd like. Yeah, and and one thing that um, that I'd like to mention is I'd really like this to be an interactive session. So if you are going to join us, I really encourage you to uh, send me ahead of time an email with what, whatever questions you may have. Or for example, let's say you're you're in a position right now that you're a little concerned about that you'd like to protect somehow, but you're not quite sure how, sure how send me the details and I'll, I'll, I can run through that example with the whole group. I think it would be a big benefit for everyone. Mark in Florida says, I won't be able to attend next Saturday, but can I get a recording? Yes, absolutely you can. It'll be in your uh, account here. As soon as we're done, probably be uploaded later that afternoon. Vince, what else do we need to know about uh, seasonality before we leave? Um, seasonality is uh, um, something that's not used in, enough. Uh, it really should be used a lot more. Um, it's very reliable and um, uh, having the ability to scan for these uh, stats and knowing ahead of time is fantastic because, uh, you know, as a technician, what you want to do is find that right spot on the chart to enter depending on your own strategy. So knowing that in April, you know, the stats are what they are, it, you can start looking a couple weeks ahead of time and find that opportunity to get in on the stock that you really want. So um, it, it really is helpful. Okay, 10 seconds, feet to the fire. 10% correction in the Dow this year? Oh, I yes think it's no. a lot more than that. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't want to be... Uh, you know, the, the, the spoiler here, but I, I think we're in for a significant drop. Can you recommend some good mattresses for people to store their money? <laughs> On that note, that's um, Vince's presentation, tradingwinds.com slash spring. Uh, we will mention that again later in the show. We're going to move on next to our friend Dave Aquino. Dave, um, I'm going to give you the presenter controls in just a second while I tee up your intro by Vince. So just give me a moment to do that. Dave, good morning. Can you hear us? Hey, Vince. Yes, yes. Uh, I wish I was as talented as Vince. It's Raul here. How are you? Oh, <laughs> sorry about that, Raul. Oh, no, no, no problem at all. No problem at all. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to bring Vince in and we'll give you a proper intro and uh, let you have at it. All right. Thank you very much, Raul. Excellent. Thanks, Raul. 
Uh, welcome, Dave. Uh, just give you a quick uh, presentation here or, or introduction, and I'll turn it over to you. Dave Aquino is a professional trader and former money manager with over 20 years of professional experience. Dave is a partner at Basecamp Trading and specializes in teaching income trading strategies using stocks and options. Dave previously managed the ultra high net worth portfolio of a division of Vanguard Asset Management, and Dave is also a graduate a graduate of the uh, Vanderbilt University. Dave, it's great to have you with us. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. I, I know I'm looking forward to the presentation and um, I know we got started a little late, so I'll, I'll turn it over to you right now and, and off you Thanks, go. Vince. Thank you, Vince. Yeah, that's no problem at all. And uh, thank you very much for that very kind introduction. I, hopefully I can step into those shoes and uh, and then and, uh, be as spectacular as your intro. So again, thank you very much. Um, I, I always enjoy uh, uh, being able to interact with traders in, in this forum. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we can learn from each other. And uh, what I'm trying to do this morning is just bring you some ideas uh, on a system of trading that we implement a lot. So again, thank you very much for that kind introduction. I think everything is uh, 10, 4 right here. Okay, everything looks good. Okay, so um, again, uh, I am with uh, Basecamp Trading. Uh, we've been uh, teaching and trading and uh, mentoring and coaching traders for uh, well over uh, six years. Um, here at Basecamp Trading, we started out our life as a uh, indicator development company uh, for the hedge fund industry and professional uh, traders, professional money managers. Uh, we found that uh, our uh, trading techniques uh, that we developed with those indicators became very popular in the professional space, uh, so much so that retail traders uh, started clamoring for uh, our products, our workshops, and, uh, and, and eventually our mentorship programs. So we've been doing this for a long time. I've, I've definitely uh, been doing this for a long time. So Again, it's a great opportunity to speak with you all today. Okay, so, all right, just a risk disclaimer there like we uh, normally show. Now, if there is a, um, a discrepancy between the, um, the sound and my charts, just let me know. Sometimes that happens, so just yell really loudly and we'll take care of it. All right, and uh, this is rule CFTC 4.41. All right, so again, a little bit more about me. Uh, again, thank you again, Vince, for your great introduction. I've been doing this a while, folks. Uh, I've been doing this over 23 years. Uh, and Vince mentioned I graduated from Vanderbilt University. I was actually pre-med with a, a degree in molecular biology. And um, I decided to kind of cut to the chase when I saw where medical uh, and managed care was going, and I decided to just go where the money is. And um, I, I joined Merrill Lynch as a general securities uh, broker, and uh, four years into their training development program, I learned a whole lot about stocks, bonds, options, and, and just investment in general. Uh, I spent uh, the next 12 years in the ultra client group. And the reason why I bring this up is the fact that my job there was to take portfolios of really wealthy people um, that uh, have highly appreciated stock, stuff so highly appreciated the cost basis was nearly zero. Well, they never wanted to trade it. They never wanted to sell it because they'd have to pay all these capital gains. So what we did was we utilized option strategies to create income flow off that uh, off those holdings. Our clients were very happy. They could hold it and pass it on to their children. Um, and because uh, you, you never wanted to be the one to sell the AT&T stock or the General Electric stock, but you wanted to make sure you can uh, uh, have an income from that. Uh, here at Basecamp Trading, I've taken those ideas and uh, the, the options income strategy that I'm going to share with you today uh, is going to be a part of what we talk about. Okay. All right. So again, I've been doing this a while 
and I've interacted with so many levels of traders. So one question a lot of people ask is, how can I get to that level of trading? That guy or that gal is a professional. They can make their money in the markets pretty much at any time. They do this full time. This is their sole source of income. Uh, and they seem so confident and know exactly what they're doing. The, the key is that professional traders um, always seek to maximize their profits, uh, have confidence in their approach, and have consistency in their gains. Uh, you know, like you all, you want to make more money. But most traders leave money on the table because they don't know how to maximize their profits. They get into their trades late, okay? They take their profits early. Fear and greed play with their mind. And a lot of times they lose the gains they actually uh, have because they're trying too hard. They're trying for too much. You know, it can go a little bit further, okay? Uh, another thing that uh, most traders run into is they're not consistently profitable. Every once in a while, they make money, but their equity curve of their account looks like a roller coaster. It moves higher and then lower. I mean, uh, does your equity account kind of look like this? Let me get my marker up. Most of the time, what you'd love to see is an equity account that pulls up and back up and back but makes very nice progress chances are if you are um, not consistently trading well you'll have a couple of gains and then you'll have a loss and then you'll have a gain and then a gain and then a loss and then a gain and then maybe you hold on way too long and then you have a loss so by the time you get to the end of the year your market your your account has gone nowhere you've put forth a lot of effort but you don't have much results uh, from that. Um, and, and so those things are always playing on your mind. But I will tell you, in coaching and mentoring traders, the account size and their P&L over time is not the, the most important force in their trading. Their most important aspect that gives them the most trouble and helps them in the most difficult times is their confidence. Is fear your trading partner? Okay. Do you see the setups that you're supposed to trade? You understand probability. But the fact is you're scared to trade when you are supposed to. You, you uh, enter late because of you, your hesitancy. Okay. You exit late. You hold on to losers too long. And then when you find your account kind of lagging, now you're trying to catch up and try to, to hit that home run when you need to. And the fact is you don't have the confidence to do that. And that is probably the hardest thing to overcome uh, in order to become a pro trader. Okay. So again, why is trading for a living so hard? I'm uh, I'm sure a lot of you are here today because either you are you are giving trading a go, whether it's to bring in extra income, to uh, find a way to leave the rat race, to leave the profession you're in, or maybe you're a retiree and you're trying to um, have a way to replace the income um, you're you, you're lacking and not having to to work. Uh, another kind of job, maybe a retail job or a service job. Okay, why is trading for a living so difficult? Well, first of all, it's the markets, okay? If you uh, have been watching the markets in the past couple of days, you've seen kind of the panicked reaction to some news events uh, that could potentially have longer-term consequences, like a trade war with China, okay? So 90% of the market trades in one direction, and that is a bullish direction. So anytime there is a bear market or a pullback or the fear of that, uh, the, the, it's, people get paralyzed and they don't know what to do, okay? Uh, everybody enjoys a bull market. So if the market is going up, everybody seems pretty happy. But as a trader, sometimes you're in when you're supposed supposed to be out and out when you're supposed to be in because you know it's got to pull back once in a while 
um, and your trading is inconsistent, even in a bullish market. And then the worst for most retail traders are sideways markets. Okay, this is when markets are moving basically non-directionally. They're very inconsistent. They're choppy, and it's really a great place to lose money. So that's one reason why trading is difficult. How about timing? If I asked you right now, uh, what is your favorite time frame? Okay, would you be able to tell me? A lot of you will give me the answer. I'm a swing trader. Okay. Do you have consistent trade setups that you implement on a regular basis for swing trading? Probably not. How about you give your chair, give your, give yourself a chance to, to day trade, to intraday trade? What what's holding you back there? Profits uh, are, are too small. Okay, the market moves too fast in a one, two, three minute time frame. The market's choppy. I, it starts to break out, then it pulls back. And then I'm trading a reversal and then it breaks out. Okay. These are a lot of things my traders come to me with when they start first uh, being coached. And then trade execution. This is probably uh, the most difficult thing because you, you understand the markets, you understand the trades that you like to do. Now you have to execute. Okay. What trades are you good at? If I said, write down the top three trade setups that you trade, could you give that to me? And said, what you need to be is consistently skilled at entry trades, have distinct profit targets, know exactly where and when you're going to get out, whether that is because it hit the target that you're thinking uh, it's going to go to and you made money or you get stopped out because the trade went against you. All of those factors work uh, together uh, to make trading difficult. And I even haven't, I haven't even mentioned whether or not you make money. Okay. You have to get through all of these concepts before you even feel comfortable with the trades that you're taking. Now you've got to battle it out with the market. Okay. So my suggestion is this, and a lot of our traders at Basecamp Trading in my trading room actually look at what I'm about to teach you as their income trading system. All right. Why do you need an income trading system? A lifetime income trading system serves as a foundation to all your trading. It can provide you with a baseline level of monthly income, and it relieves the pressure you have as a trader to perform and to hit those home run trades, okay? How many of you have ever said to yourself, wow, I'm down for the month. I really have to find a couple of trades that can save and salvage my month, okay? I know you have. That's what you're looking for. Because when you feel that you have made progress in your trading, you feel some relief, okay? But the foundation of an income trading system is consistently repeatable trades, high probability trades, and dependable profits, okay? The fact is you also have to have a system that works, something that's proven in many markets in both trending either bullish trending or bearish trending or sideways markets where it's a lot more difficult to eke out a regular consistent income. All right. You have to be able to depend on this trading system in a, in a very reliable way because you have to make money. You also have to know how much you can generate within a given time period. It's like when you go to work right now and you say, I'm going to uh, go to work every day this week, like I'm supposed to, you know about how much you're going to bring home, right? Every two weeks when you get that paycheck, you look and you say, that's what I thought I was supposed to get. You check your hours and your pay and you, yeah, that's correct. How much can you generate on a regular basis from your trading? Do you know? Can you put a number down? Okay. Also, are you really trying to hit home runs every time you trade? because reward and risk in the markets are always balanced. The fact is your income trading system 
trades should be the smallest risk that you do and give you the highest probability of success. The fact is, when you're doing this for a living as a professional, when you're doing this as a retiree to replace the income that you're, you're no longer getting from a job, okay, this should be your highest confidence trading system. Because last I checked, when you had to make your house payment, your car payment, your, your grocery shopping payment, okay, you got to be consistent because everything depends on it, all right? The in, our income trading is based on several different things. It's a credit spread trading system, and it's based uh, profits are based on high probability trades that take advantage of theta decay or time decay. What we're trying to do is generate regular profits anywhere from four to five to six percent per trade. Okay, doesn't seem like that home run trade where a lot of people promise you, hey, triple your profits in one trade. I don't want any part of that. Okay, I want the, the very straightforward, consistent four to six percent of trade, and I want to do this three, four, five times a week on a regular basis, okay? Like I said, this trading system I'm going to share with you, we've been trading this over three plus years, over 620 trades so far, okay? On average, 93.8% of these trades come out as winning trades, okay? That means at the end of their expiration, we have a winning trade on our hands, okay? The nice thing about this income trading system, it, it, it's a step-by-step -step method of trading, okay? Again, consistent of profits, consistently doing a certain number of trades per week, and it's a step-by-step -step process that you can learn, and if you wanna master it, it's a great way to go because it works, okay? Again, don't reinvent the wheel because it's already out there for you. All you have to do is follow our step-by-step -step trading system. All right, so let's talk about the income trading system uh, we utilize in my trading room. It's called 11-hour options, okay? It's our foundational uh, credit spread trading income system. It is, again, proven uh, it is also consistently profitable way of trading options, okay? The fact is when you trade credit spreads, you're actually trading based primarily on uh, selling something of value, and over time, that item that you sold decays so that um, by the time the trade expires, you get to keep all the premium that you sold it for. Okay, you're basically selling a decaying asset that will be worthless after the expiration. Have you ever heard the, the stat that 80% of all options out there expire worthless? Well, you're the trader selling that. So by their nature, if you're selling options, you're going to be, uh, w without ever doing anything else, you know, you have an 80% chance of that option um, expiring worthless, okay? That's why when you, you uh, traders out there that buy options long the time and go long, a lot of times you find that your option is decaying in your, in your portfolio. Even though it does sort of move, you lose money still, okay? If you just hold it to the end, well, you have a complete loss. I'm the trader that sold that to you. OK, uh, the other aspect of our 11 hour option strategy, it is something that we can do several times a week. I can plot out on a calendar how many trades I'm going to do every single month based on the calendar itself. I look at option expirations and I plan out the trades that I'm going to do. It is proven in many different market environments. Okay, I've been doing this primarily in the bull market because over the past three years, the markets have generally been moving higher. But I'm going to show you a situation like you were talking, uh, the last speaker was talking about increased volatility in the markets. We've been doing very well in 
down markets, in quick moving markets, in volatile markets moving up and down. Uh, because we've been doing this over three years now, almost four, we go through different calendar seasons where everybody else looks at spring, summer, fall, winter. Well, you know, we know the characteristics of options trading in each of those seasons. You know, sometimes in the middle of summer, things are kind of dead. It's hard to trade directionally. Well, we're sitting on our credit spreads making money uh, every single week. All right, consistency is a hallmark of this strategy. Again, we've we've logged over 620 trades over three and a half, three, three and a half years. Again, a 93.8% win rate. And on average, our trades make over 5.2%. Okay, and that's bef that's before commission. Everybody has a different commission. Personally, my commission rates run anywhere from uh, twelve to thirteen percent of my total profits. Okay. All right. So the strategy again, we are focused very squarely on high probability trading. When I created this strategy, it really wanted to stick to a ninety percent plus win rate. Well, right now we're exceeding that at 93.8. We want to uh, be in the markets as little as possible. Okay. You know, the how the weather, how the weather in the market looks on Monday completely can be different by Thursday, right? We we could be very bullish on Monday. By Thursday, we're in a trade war with China. So what we're trying to do is keep our time frames short and be exposed to the market only about a third of the time. So we go into a trade usually by noon on Thursday, and it expires at maximum profit usually by close of business on Friday. Okay, we take these trades and evaluate their uh, whether or not we're going to do them based on the 60-minute chart. And what we are evaluating is price momentum, support and resistance levels, uh, whether they be off the daily chart or whether it be off the hourly chart. And our trading goal, again, solely, is to generate income through overnight theta decay. And again, this has served us very well, over 5.2% over the long term. So why is this different from other strategies out there? OK, you say, I have a breakout strategy. Here. Why is this strategy different? Well, base first thing that we're doing is we're selling credit spreads. What we're trying to do is look at the charts from a different point of view. And I'm going to show it to you in just a second here. Our focus is selling these short strikes away from the projected price direction. OK, I want you to think about it this way. Where will prices most likely not be? at expiration. That's what you want to look at. All right, so here's an example. Here's a chart of the S&P uh, 500, the SPX. Now, you can see the hourly bars. They're moving all around. So this is our normal uh, price chart, and this is our momentum chart, okay? Those of you who may be familiar with MACD, this is our uh, MQ momentum indicator. It's similar, uh, ours is more dynamic, but it still serves the same purpose. When the slope of this line is, uh, is, is up, market is bullish, price action is usually higher. So is the case right here. So as price comes down, makes a reversal and comes back up, if in this process we see that pivot, we see momentum is going higher, we have to think to ourselves, where will price be in the next 11 bars? So after we make the pivot, we can sell at a price level down here, okay? We can structure a bullish put credit spread that takes advantage of this bullish price action. And if, if this if this strike is right at this price level, okay, after 11 bars, these options expire worthless, we get to keep all this money, okay? Does that make sense? What we're doing is playing a gigantic game of keep away. 
we have the ball, we're down here, we want price to run away from us. We check momentum, we check support and resistance, and we take the trade when the, when the timing is right and price moves away. Here, let me give you another example of another opportunity. <clears throat> you see, we come down, we bounce like I showed you, price moves higher, what's it do right here? It's a sideways consolidation. And then after that sideways consolidation, we get a continuation move to the upside. See the momentum takes off to the upside. Well, guess what? We're gonna use this trading opportunity to sell a credit spread down here, okay? At this strike level, it move, price moves higher. So we feel pretty comfortable, price is moving higher. Say, what, well, Dave, what happens if it comes down and it heads towards our short strike? Well, guess what? This channel right here actually creates two horizontal price levels that act as price supports. Okay, price could come down, hit that level, and bounce because that's the level we broke out from. This area that was resistance is now support, so it bounces up. If it breaks through the first level, it could come down, hit that level, and then bounce up again. But in order to do that, it actually has to reverse this momentum basically 180 degrees and come down. Does that make sense? The next level, the next example here, again, this is kind of just, we're just following the trend. So let me erase this chart. What do you get here? Anybody know? This is a bearish divergence. Okay, difference in momentum double top a lot of people call it a double top price comes down well guess what we can sell a credit spread up here when price starts moving we don't even have to guess we can even let it start to move then we sell premium up here and as price comes down guess what it hits that same channel takes off to the downside sell another credit spread right here okay hits another channel Price takes down, guess what? Sell another credit spread right here. Does that make sense? You all follow? What we're doing is taking advantage of price momentum and, um, and support and resistance levels, selling premium in terms of a credit spread and allowing that thing to expire at maximum profit at the close. Okay, that's again, the cons most consistent way we find the trade because it works to our advantage and uh, price moves very, very well. The, the one question that a lot of people ask me is with this strategy, why, does it, why do you have such a high probability of success? Well, the first thing is we, we take advantage of time decay, okay? Because we are selling options, selling premium. Anytime time passes, we win, you know, we're winning. It, the people that we sell to, people that buy options, actually have to get the timing right as well as the direction right and the speed at which it moves is important. If it moves now, this is what you have to see. If it moves next week, well, it's too late. Options already expired, okay? We have to be consistent, okay? We have a very good history of these trades. And we're trying to win as often as possible and um, make progress. And here we are with a reasonable reward risk. Okay. A lot of you look at that and say, that's really small. Okay. I, I really want to make 30, 40% per trade. Well, a lot of times you have to because you don't win very often. Maybe you win half the time. So you're always playing a game of catch up. I want you to imagine this, with this kind of win rate, okay, in order to make forward progress, a lot of people say, you know, two steps forward, one step back. Well, that, that's a really choppy way of making forward progress, right? How about three steps forward and one step back? That's pretty good. How about five steps forward and one step back? Even better. At a win rate of 93.8%, you can take 14 steps forward and a one step back, all right? And that one step back 
we actually have very good risk control. If we are trying to make $100 per trade, we're willing to take in a loss of $200 to $300, okay? We can do that because that, that one step back can't possibly outweigh the forward progress we get with the 14 wins going forward. So over time, we're going to do extremely well, okay? I wanna show you some bottom line results here because I'm, I'm watching my time. And um, like I said, we've had a lot of success. Our traders have a lot of success. So I wanna share with you this story. It's about one of our traders, his name is Jim. I almost gave you his last name. He is from Tyler, Texas. He's been uh, trading with us at Basecamp Trading for over a year. And uh, he actually attended a, a boot camp in Dallas, Texas. We had in October, gosh, sorry, October of 2017. I'm thinking it's 18, 2017. So a little over six months ago, uh, Jim was there. And he said, Dave, I really like this 11 hour option strategy. Uh, but uh, I, I want to give you a fair shake. It sounds too good to be true. So I'm going to commit. I'm going to do these trades. I'm going to put down $10,000. I want to see where it takes me. I said, okay. So I get a, an email from him in November. Dave, this strategy is great. I'm doing it on the S&P. And um, I, I think it's going to work out really good because your track record is so good. I said, okay, well, just keep me informed, Jim. So every, uh, the one other thing that I told him was, you need to make sure you have balanced reward and risk. Sometimes we're trying for six or seven or eight or 9%. I said, don't do that. Because what you're gonna do is increase your risk because you're reaching for more profits. There's a reason why we game for, for four or five or 6%. And the other thing is you have to use good stop loss. So you have to follow the rules I outline in the program. So Jim, you know, he's a, he's a good guy. He's a good trader. He can follow the rules. All right. So here's the results he's had. So I get an email from him. He said, Dave, November was great. I didn't have any, I didn't have any losses. I took uh, a number of trades and it looked really good. That was great. He even sent me a screenshot of his statement. He did the same thing in December. No losses. X looking great. I'm getting more and more comfortable doing these trades. Guess what? I got his same email in January and February. And here we are in end of March. Jim told me uh, no losses in the past uh, four and a half months. And these are his results. Here is the first uh, month. Overall, the portfolio gained 28.8%. Okay. In December, 16.9%. I believe this is January. It could have been January, February. Could have, picture could have been swapped, but this month, 38.3%. And the last statement I got, 24.7%. Again, very consistent in the way he trades. We actually have Jim on a different, uh, because his portfolio has been growing so well. We actually, I actually encourage him to tally up all the gains at the end of the month and for him to uh, send that to his local bank. OK, in this case, he's trading an IRA. I said, open a small IRA to your bank so that you can transfer half your winnings every month into that IRA and conservatively invest in an IRA in like a, a CD or something. OK, what we want to do is preserve as much as we can because the markets are going to have bumps every once in a while. And I told Jim, just be prepared. One day you're going to have a loss. He laughs and he says, it's okay, because I can have my stop losses. So, I mean, that's the kind of results you can have. And I'm gonna actually share with you a lot of those results here in just a minute. But I just I wanna ask you a quick question, okay? 
All right, are you ready for different types of trading results, okay? Do you wanna maximize your profitability to know pretty much exactly uh, how much reward and risk to take to consistently have a winning uh, portfolio? Our average win rate is over 5%. What we're also trying to do is have consistency, win more often. We win 93% of the time. And just like I told you before, personally, as a coach, consistency is actually the most important thing. Don't impress me with 100% gain. Impress, impress me with 100 winners. Show me that, and I will show you an extremely good trader. Because this, with consistency, you means that you are practicing execution of trade setups the right way many times successfully, okay? It's like this. If you're a golfer and you're trying to hit a really good drive off the tee, all right? Now, if you, if you go out there and, and you knock it 20 yards further than anybody else, that's kind of impressive. If you can do that, Every time we play golf the entire summer, that is truly impressive. And that will may do more for your game than anything else. Well, so can uh, consistent trading. It will, it will not only elevate the account size that you have, how much money you have, but it will help you become a very consistent trader. And it will boost your confidence so much so that you know with confidence you can approach the markets on a regular basis and win. And again, that confidence is what will keep you in the game and keep you doing well. Okay. The how would you how would you feel if you knew you had the opportunity to take 14 winning trades before you take a losing trade? And if you take a losing trade, you're happy because now you know you have a very good chance of having uh, 10 to 12 to 14 winners in a row going forward, okay? That's the kind of confidence you really want to see as a trader, all right? So the opportunity I have for you today is our 11-hour options workshop, the same program, the same income trading program that I've shown you these results so far. It's an on-demand workshop, so you can actually review the workshop now, learn from it this weekend, and be up and running and trading next week, okay? I'm going to teach you in the workshop how to make full-time weekly profits by being in the market only one-third of the time. So your exposure is really small, okay? We're trying to consistently trade high probability trades just a couple times a week. If you work for old time, we have a way you can trade the 11-hour option strategy as a set it and forget it type of strategy. It can manage itself. You just have to implement the stop losses the right way, okay? We actually have a step-by-step -step method. The, I've shown you just parts of it, uh, of how to select the best option credit spread, how to select the best strike prices from your trades, okay? This is what I was showing you with momentum and support and resistance, Okay, this is actually how we increase our probability of success even above the, uh, the normal delta that dictates percentage of uh, wins. You know, if you're selling a delta 20 option, that means you have an 80% chance for wins. So we usually sell the delta 20 or the delta 15 out of the money options for our credit spreads. Well, my gosh, Dave, well, how, if you're supposed to be winning, you know, 80 to 85% of the time, how are you increasing that to 93 plus percent of the time over three years? It's not a fluke. It's over three years. It's the way we do it. It's our method. Also, part of that method is risk control. All right. When you take 14 steps forward and one step back, you want to limit your loss on that one step back. You can't avoid it. It's going to be there. But the fact is, if you structure it pro uh, properly, you have the best chance to limit that loss. The, other, the fact of the matter is 11-hour options is probably uh, one of the most conservative credit spread trading strategies out there. Okay?
And the fact is also that this 11 hour options trade setup is something that you can do profitably 52 weeks a year, any time of the year, any month of the year, and in any market, bullish, bearish, or sideways. Okay? So here is the link for you uh, that you can use. It's www.bctnow.com slash credit. Okay? www.bctnow.com slash credit. If you use that, you'll come to the order page. It looks like this. Billing information, street address comes out right there. Ah, spilled the beans a little early. The program right there is the price. But this, let me show you what you get. Now, the fact is the 11-hour option strategy retails. If you were to buy it off our website for $346. We're also going to put in one month of platinum membership that renews at $97 a month after the first 30 days. What I do is every single time we do an 11-hour options trade, I create a video and I also uh, send out by text alert uh, that the video is out there because I, I like to show you. Uh, the trades show you what to look out for. Uh, I'll show it to you right on the, the, the chart. And we actually list out the trades. So they actually look like this. You'll see this spreadsheet. And this is an example of an 11-hour options trade that we put on on Thursday for Friday's expiration. You can see we took the trades in SPX, in Amazon, and Google. The results were 5% gain here, 5% gain here, 6% gain here. The buying power used in this was 10,000, 5,000, and 5,000. So at $20,000, uh, we walked uh, away with a profit of, I didn't even do this math, $1,000 with, um, again, $20,000 of buying power. So a little over 5% uh, over the course of 11 hours. That's where we came up with the name. Okay. You can double check that. Those trades are actually very straightforward. All right. So that's what you'll get. You'll get a video with that and the explanation. Now, altogether, the total value is $443. Um, but we're not going to uh, give that to you at $443. We're not going to ask that of you. We think it's such a good opportunity. And uh, again, a lot of traders in a, in a down market or sideways market, a volatile market, an uncertain market, they're having a lot of trouble. So we want to give you a great uh, offer for this webinar, $49, almost a 90% discount, folks. Okay? We want to get you on the path of income. You think about it right there. I showed you those trades. I made over $1,050 just trading uh, 11 hours from Thursday into Friday. Okay. This is $49. You could, you could recover $49 in one trade. Okay. So that is our special webinar offer. If you have any trouble, you can contact us as support at basecamptrading.com. But again, the order form is pretty straightforward. It's one page. There it is. Billing information. Uh, there's the link. Uh, you fill that out, click 49 and off, you're, you're up and running. Uh, you not only will get <clears throat> the workshop that you can look at it right now, this weekend, be up and ready and running on Monday. But the fact is, <clears throat> when you sign up, you're going to get those emails letting you know that our 11-hour option strategy is up and running. So you're probably going to get three to five different trades this week alone. So if you... <laughs> If you just make a couple of dollars off each trade, even though your count might be small, you could make a tremendous, you, you could cover yourself on that cost in just, just a couple of uh, couple of trades here. Now, with that, I do have a little bit more time, so I want to share with you a couple of more results. Now, you guys are probably going, you know what, that sounds too good to be true. This is actually a compilation of this set of spreadsheets, okay? This is, this is how I show my trading room, okay? This is how I record it in the video. 
So this is how I made it nice and pretty for you, okay? Now, I didn't do three years. This is the same time frame that Jim H was trading, okay? This is October 1st, 2017 through this Friday. We took 92 trades, 89 winners, and then we had one delta neutral overweight loss. It's, it's a more advanced strategy, but we basically turned a losing trade into a winning trade. And then we took a three times loss. So we're trying to get 100. Uh, I, more importantly, we're trying to get 250. We had a $770 loss. And then we had another one we were trying to get like 250. And I think we had a $120 loss, something like that. But I'm going to show you. Okay, these are absolutely all the trades we've taken in the past six months that are specific for the 11 hour option strategy. Now, here's October 2017. I have 16 out of 16, uh, actually 16, 15 out of 16 winners. And this is that, um, this is the one that we kind of had a loss, so to speak. Um, I lost on the credit spread, but I, I won on the protection. So we walked away from that. I guess that's like $380 of profit, okay? Trying to get 900 and net, we, we come away with like, you know, $300, $400. And that's fine. That's October, 2017. That's my idea of, you know, taking that one step back. Here it is in November. November, we take 13 trades, 13 out of 13 this month. <clears throat> this is right here. This is my 11-hour um, option strategy applied to Black Friday. Black Friday, while you were spending money, I made $2,100. This is December. Okay. Uh, we, we walked away from December, 16 out of 16. There are all of our trades. Okay. Some trades are 5%. Some trades, this one is 7%. That was a little bit out there. Uh, this is another 7%. This is a 4%. Okay, so on average, this is what we do. Here's January 2018. These are my two losing trades. Same day, same direction, two different stocks. Again, my stop loss has worked, $770 loss, uh, $240 loss. Okay, so in January, we took 18 trades. We had 16 winners. And then here's February. February, we have 14 trades. We're 14 and 14. We're, we're batting 100 in February. And here we are in March. We So far in March, we have 15 trades out of 15 trades. Now you say, well, Dave, you know what? That still could be seasonality. It still could be, you know, luck, whatever. Maybe you're just in a bull market and you're just doing really, really well. I want to show you a chart, okay? Now remember, February, we're 100% we're on our trades. March, we're 100% on our trades. Tell me this is not a challenging market to be trading in, okay? Here's January uh, January 30th. So we had a bearish move to the 200-day simple moving average. We had a bullish bounce, a 618 bounce. And then all the way back, this is March 1st. So this is February. This is March. This is actually a pennant. We actually thought we were breaking to the upside. We pulled back into the pennant, and here we are sitting on top of the 200-day simple moving average. In this most volatile market we've had probably in the past two years, if, this, if the method of trading is bad, why are we batting 100? Okay? Over the past nearly 30 trades, we are batting 100 in the most volatile markets that we have. So let me ask you, are those the kind of results that you would like to see? All right? You know, some of you have what if concerns. What if I have bad timing, don't have the money right now? What if I'm not sure if this will work for me? How about I need to talk to my spouse? Well, folks, a lot of times we try to put things off because we're uncertain. And the more we put things off, the intention drops and the more effort we 
need in order to take action. So my suggestion, because it's such a good deal, maybe you can take advantage of it right now. All right, so this special, special webinar offer, $49. I mean, the $49 right there, it's almost like I'm giving you the workshop for free, giving you half the cost on a one month membership and saying, here you go, guys, here's a bunch of trades. Best of luck with it. Because you're pro at three to five trades a week, you're going to be getting anywhere from 12 to 15 trades. All right, I want you to think about based on what you've seen and the trades that we've taken, do you think you'll be able to manage $49? I think it's a great opportunity. So go to www.bctnow.com slash credit, and I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions that you have about 11-hour options, whether they be here or our trading room or by email. Um, if you have any questions, just go to support at basecamptrading.com. Again, I really appreciate the opportunity, Vince. Um, and uh, this is always a great forum to, to, to touch as many traders as we, as we can and share uh, great opportunities with you in the market. So again, thanks, guys. Dave, thank you very much. Uh, great presentation. We have put the offer link in the chat box. Trades, uh, excuse me, bctnow.com slash credit. Uh, Dave, thank you again for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Ru. We'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we're moving to Jeremy Whaley. We're about uh, eight minutes behind. Jeremy, I'm going to give you the panelists, excuse me, the presented controls, and then we'll give you a proper intro. Let me know when you... I'll let you know when we can see your screen. All right, fantastic. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you great and see your screen as well. Just give me a moment and I'll get Vince to give you a proper intro. How are you, by the way? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Well, you know what? With that kind of enthusiasm, I'm all, all of a sudden doing better myself. Oh, right, wonderful. Here. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So our next speaker is Jeremy Whaley. He is the co-founder and CEO of TradeSmart University. He began trading financial markets in 1999 and spends most of his time, um, most of his active trading in the world of options. Following the financial crisis in 2008, he helped launch TradeSmart University. Since that time, he has helped uh, mentor and train more than 100,000 traders in over 70 countries. When he's not working on a new entrepreneurial adventure, he likes to spend time with his kids, fishing and working on their lake cabin. Sounds great to me. He lives in Nashville, Tennessee with his wife and three kids. Jeremy, it's great to have you with us. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, your presentation. Well, thank you, Vince and Raul. Thanks for letting me be part of this. And uh, it's great to be here. It's my first time to, to do anything with uh, with you guys. So uh, I feel really honored to be here. And I appreciate everybody who's here attending today, giving us your time and you know, taking part of your Saturday morning to learn a little bit about uh, options and stocks and all the stuff that we're learning about today. So today I'm going to talk about getting the edge with option volume. And um, hopefully I'm taking a little bit of a different angle. You know, what's interesting about a form like this, we all kind of do a lot of the same stuff. You know, we all we all sell options. We all buy options. We all buy and sell stocks. We all look at technical analysis. So, you know, I wanted to show up today and give you guys something that's a little bit different, maybe. And uh, I'm excited to share this. Actually, the, here's a full disclosure. This is the first time I've taught the stuff that I'm going to teach you today. Um, it's something I've been working with for a little while, but uh, as you're going to learn, a friend of mine recently opened my eyes to some some uh, new kind of insights we can get with option volume, and I thought, you know, this is a great form to try that out. So hopefully it's going to be a little bit different, and I'm looking forward to it. I think the stuff we're going to talk about today is, uh, you know, two, three years down the road is going to be a mainstay in how we do uh, options trading and stock trading as a whole from an analysis standpoint. So that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, here's my big fat disclaimer. Uh, I'm teaching you educational stuff. You're not going to go out and do anything stupid. You know you're here to learn stuff, and uh, I'm not responsible if you go out and do something that I didn't tell you to go do. Okay, so there's our big disclaimer. We all have to do it, but you know what you're here for. Uh, we've already had a couple of those this morning, so I think we're just going to let that one slide and save the uh, 30 seconds. I have some great news for you. If you are not an options trader, the stuff I'm going to teach you is still going to help you. That's what's really exciting about it. And one of the things, like I mentioned, that opened my eyes to option volume 
is um, we can actually use insights from option volume in a way that uh, you know futures traders, regular stock traders, options traders alike, we can all benefit from it. So even if you're not an options trader, uh, the stuff I'm gonna teach you today is gonna be really insightful for you, and I think you're gonna really like it. Uh, the next thing I wanna let you know, this is the best news of all, this is not a giant 45 minute sales pitch. Um, so I'm gonna be really candid at the end of this, I'm gonna tell you about a product we have and uh, you can buy it if you want to buy it. If you think that what I teach you is valuable, great. But I'm going to focus in here on just teaching you some stuff. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way. We're in a, we're in a webinar to learn some stuff, and I'm going to do my best to get it done in 30 to 45 minutes because they told me that was my time slot. Um, another full disclosure, I normally teach 90 minutes at a time. So every time we do these 45-minute webinars, I'm, I'm either way short or way long. So I'm hoping today is not one of the way long ones. It won't be. I'll, uh, I'll just look at the clock and start to cut it off. Anyway, here's my overview of what we're going to talk about. If you got your pencils and your pieces of paper together, um, really quick three bullet points, just kind of a broad outline. I'm going to teach you very quickly, just so we're on the same page, what my philosophy of trading is. I'm going to teach you how option traders have to show their hand. And this is what's unique about option traders that other traders don't have to do. And so I'm going to share that with you. And then I'm going to show you how you can use that option volume to create an edge in the market. You know, it doesn't matter what strategy you're doing. If you're doing credit spreads, if you're doing, um, you know, straddle strangles, if you're doing long options, long calls or puts. It doesn't matter what your strategy is, even if you're just buying stock and selling short. Um, the stuff I'm going to teach is, is going to be an edge for you. And uh, I, somebody texted me, totally got me off my, I forgot what I was going to say. It doesn't matter what your, uh, which market you're trading. You know what? We're just going to keep going here. Uh, anyway, so let me uh, jump into this here. And, you know, have you ever wondered how it is that people uh, look at the market and some people just almost have an insider knowledge about what's about to happen in the marketplace? Have you ever kind of just looked at that and said, man, that's interesting. I remember when I was learning to trade. Uh, it seemed like some people I was talking to, they just kind of never lost money. You know, or you look at their their portfolios and you're like, oh, we win, you know, 85% of the time, 90% of the time we're always winning. You're kind of sitting there like scratching your head. How is it they do that? Or how it is some people, I watched some, some people, they saw a news story and immediately went in place to trade. And I was like, how did they know what they were looking at? Or for a lot of people who are beginning to trade, it's just as simple as, how do you know when to buy and when to sell, where the buyers are showing up, where the sellers are going to show up? How do you know those kind of things? And so the, the big question that is out there, the question that everybody kind of focuses in on is what's the value? What's the value of the stock? That's what everybody wants to answer. And I'm going to propose to you that's not the right question, but let's talk about that for a brief moment. For our entire life, we've kind of been conditioned by the news media and the you know, so-called professionals that if you want to trade for a profit, you got to figure out the value of the stock. Have any of you guys ever heard that before? So we go out and we start doing all of our fundamental analysis and we look at the track record and you kind of look at all the details of the nerdy stuff and you kind of come up with a theory of what you think the value of the stock should be. And then if it works, then, um, you know, hey, I was right. You know, is the price under, is the stock underpriced? You know, what's the value of the stock? Everybody kind of tries to figure this out. I'm going to suggest to you that that's all fine and dandy if you like playing with numbers, but that's not me. I'm a recovering musician and you're going to discover that I like to keep stuff really simple. And this stuff is not simple to me. I could not look at a stock and say, I know what the value should be. And then whenever I did do all the calculations, what I discovered is, Half the time it was wrong. It was just a theoretical idea. This is what the stock really should be. And so here's what we discovered. What really matters is not the theoretical value of what the stock should be based on all the numbers. What really matters is the price point where the buyers are buying and the price point where the sellers are selling. And that's really it. What matters is where do the buyers show up and where do the sellers show up? So what I'm gonna share with you here is a visual way that you can identify where the buyers are showing up, where the trade's about to go bullish, where the trade's about to go bearish, without going out and doing a ton of research, without doing big calculations, without just sitting there scanning the market ad nauseum, trying to you know, find that opportunity. And what you're really gonna discover, which is kind of funny, is all this information was in front of you the whole time. But you know, most of us as human beings, we watch the news and we feel like, oh, those people know more than me. And so we just kind of follow along with it and we figure that's the way it's gotta be. And then it becomes really complicated. And uh, I don't think it needs to be that way. So how would you guys like for me to share that with you? That's what we're gonna do. And uh, you're gonna discover that this stuff's been sitting in front of you the whole time. Now I mentioned briefly, and I'll mention it again, 
today's lesson, I, I do all of it. I mean, I, I do the option strategies. We, we do all of it. Uh, but today I'm going to teach you something that's kind of brand new. And I'm also going to show you a tool uh, that's relatively new as well that a friend of mine, uh, Tom Joseph, who's been in the marketplace for, what, 40, 50 years, he tipped me off to this uh, just about six months ago. And he said, hey, Jeremy, if you've not looked at this, you got to check this out. And so that's what I'm going to share with you and what you're going to dig into, just kind of a small corner of some of the analysis process. All right, really quickly here, who am I? Why should you be listening to me? Well, you're listening to me because you trust Vince and Vince said, hey, Jeremy, would you come talk for our group? And I said, sure. So that's why you're here. But just a little bit of a background. My name is Jeremy Quayley. I do live in Nashville, Tennessee with my wife. We got three kids. We have a dog and it's a very active and exciting household. And those three kids are eight and under. So you can imagine how exciting that is. Uh, as Vince mentioned, I started trading back in 1999. I was actually a senior in college whenever I started trading the financial markets. Was it my first career, though? I got interested in college, but I left school and I uh, went straight in the music industry. And I did that for nine years. And I was a relatively successful producer, produced over 100 albums. And it was an interesting, exciting uh, life. But I discovered that successful musicians are broke by the rest of the world standards. And I didn't want to do that. So I left that and I started trading, which was kind of my second love. And uh, I really started to hone in on that. And then back in 1999, uh, we started Trade Smart, and uh, it's been an amazing adventure. Uh, I don't, you guys really don't need all that background, but uh, bottom line is everything was falling apart in 2008. You guys probably remember that, and uh, a bunch of fans and fa nah, excuse me, friends and family members were. Um, they were saying, hey, Jeremy and Josh, my business partner said, what, what are you guys doing? Because it seems to be working for you. And that one thing led to the next. Before you know it, we were teaching the whole world how to trade. So um, personally, I am an options trader. But like I mentioned earlier, um, it's it, it works for all of it, the stuff that I'm going to teach you today. So here's my philosophy. Uh, let me just kind of roll through this so you're on the same page with me because everybody has a different idea of how we approach the market. Some people are trend traders. Some people are you know, neutral traders. Here's my general philosophy. <clears throat> Point number one, I think that simplicity is freedom. People say trading is freedom. People say, you know, not having a job is freedom. None of that is true. The reality is if it's simple and it's repeatable and you get your time back, that's freedom. And if it's complicated, it's not freedom. If you're a day trader, you have to sit on your butt in front of your computer 24 hours a day so that you can make sure you catch every move. It's not freedom. Freedom is I can place three or four or five trades a week. I can uh, have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. I've got good risk measures in control. It's simple. It's repeatable. And I can go out and play golf and have a life. That's freedom. So that's my general philosophy is keep it simple. And for me, keeping it simple starts with trading the trend. I don't try to trade the counter trends. I don't try to get into the complicated stuff because the trends are the most predictable part of the move. And so if you start getting into uh, counter trends and retracements and trying to, you know, fine tune the top and the bottom, you're not going to have as much success. It's so much easier to identify the trend, stick with the trend and trade strategies that work with the trend. And so here's my theory. Number one, and really theory number two and three pretty much follow theory. Number one, only trade with the trend. Just trade with the trend. Just keep it simple. Trade with this trend. Don't try to pick the bottoms in a downtrend. Don't try to pick the tops in an uptrend. Trade with the trend. Avoid the counter trend retracements, especially if you're an options trader. Now, if you're selling options, it's one thing. But if you're a long options trader, the counter trend moves are going to beat you to death. So don't worry about that. Just trade with the most predictable part of the trade. So here's what the most predictable part of the trade is. In a bullish trend, it's when a stock's making higher highs and higher lows. It looks like this. You guys have all seen this before. We're looking for you know the moving average crosses going up. Those are the big, uh, big signals. Smaller signals are when you retrace back over to the moving average and then you continue the trend. In a bearish trend, Lower highs, lower lows. This is what it looks like. You guys have all seen this. The big moving average crosses are the big part of the trend. And then you've got the little retracements that re retrace back to a 10 or 20 period moving average. And then you continue the trend. These are your trading opportunities. And if the trend is bearish, you want to do bearish trades. If the trend is bullish, you want to do bullish trades. And that's it. That's it. That's my whole philosophy of trading. And like I mentioned, I'm a recovering musician. I, I didn't come from a mathematical background. I didn't even come from an accounting or deep financial background. I happen to be really good at what I do, but I didn't come from all that background. I keep it really simple because that's what way musicians are. And that's what I think that you should do. So here's, here's maybe the best visual of all. If you're going to try to fight the market, if you're going to try to go against the trend, you're going to be like a fish. You're going to be like a salmon. Don't fight the trend. Why? Because in the end, the bears will get you. 
Okay, so just remember that. And again, here's my philosophy of trading on one slide. Trade with a trend. Trade with a trend. Don't try to pick the bottoms. Don't try to pick the tops. Don't trade the counter trend retracements. Trade with a trend. All right, so boom, that's over. Now you know my philosophy of trading. You learn that in two minutes. Now let's get to some stuff that puts money in your pocket. Trading the trend is just a, a structure of the philosophy, right? The magic comes in timing the trade. The magic comes in saying, hey, I understand my philosophy is to trade with a trend, but how do I know when to get into the trade? How do I know when to trade with the trend and in which direction to go? And there's lots of tools that we have at our disposal, things like support and resistance, moving averages, your chart patterns, your candle patterns, all of your indicators. All of these things are great tools that help us fine tune the entries and fine tune the exits. But today I wanna add a new tool in here and that is to take a look at what option traders are doing. Now, my understanding is most of the people in the room are option traders. If you're an options trader, maybe type that into the little questions panel here. Let me see if I can open this questions panel. I'm not sure I can. No, I don't have access to the questions panel, but um, anyway, if you're an options trader, then this is gonna make a lot of sense to you. If you're not an options trader, it's okay. It's still gonna make sense to you, even if it seems a little bit overwhelming at first and it's still gonna give you an edge. Because option traders by nature have to tell you what they're doing. You say, well, how is that? Well, just imagine that you're going to Las Vegas and you're gonna play a card game. And imagine you're sitting at the tables and you got high stakes poker on the table and you're looking at your cards, but you have no idea what your opponents have. That's why we call it poker, right? So you gotta play your poker face. Well, what if one of your opponents happen to turn their cards around and stick them on top of their forehead. You'd say that guy's an idiot, but that's exactly what option traders have to do. By nature of being an option trader, you have to display your hand. You have to say, look, I'm biased one way or the other. And we can use that bias to help determine which way the general sentiment is swaying. And so here's what we see. Option traders by nature show their hand, and here's what it looks like. An influx in call volume indicates a more bullish bias, and an influx in put volume indicates a more bearish bias. So let that sink in for a brief moment. Call options are the right to buy a stock, right? So if we see a sudden surge in call options, what does that tell us? It tells us that for whatever reason, there's a sudden surge of people that are buying call options. They are most likely biased as a bullish trader. Even if they're buying calls to hedge a short trade, what are they doing? They're hedging themselves against a bullish trade, which means in that moment, they're biased that there's going to be a bullish move. Influx of put volume. What is the put? It's the right to sell the stock. So if suddenly we see a surge of put volume, what does that tell us? A lot of people are buying puts. They think the stock's going down. They may be buying puts as a speculative trade. They may be buying puts to hedge their long stock position. It doesn't matter. For whatever reason, there's a lot of people that are suddenly saying, oh, crap, I need to be trading to the downside. Even if they're just hedging, they're buying puts. And that indicates that we've got a bias of what's happening in the marketplace. And very often, not all the time, but very often, this starts to build up about one or two days before the move starts to take place. And so we've got an interesting insight. And uh, like I say, this is something that I've started looking at over about the last six or eight months. And um, it was, uh, I, I can't believe, it's one of those things that was so obvious, but why was I not spending all my time looking at this all, these time, all this time? And uh, once I started looking, I was like, my gosh, this is uh, almost too good to be true. Because a day or two before the moves start, you start to see the buildup. It's almost like going to war. Can you imagine, um, you know, if you're going to go fight the enemy and you're watching and suddenly the enemy is stacking up on the battle lines and you see them building up, what are you thinking to yourself? You're thinking, oh, well, the enemy is building up. There's probably going to be a battle right here. And that's what we see when we see option volume stacking up. So just take a look at an option chain here and notice the volume column. Okay, so both calls and puts, you got a volume column. And if you look down here, you're going to notice all the different volume. This is for, for the spiders. You're going to notice the volume buildup. And what you're going to notice on this particular chain is there was a very heavy put imbalance. If you go right at the money, it was pretty balanced. We had about 7,000 and 5,000 for the at the money strike prices. Okay, but if you go just slightly in and out of the money, you're going to notice we had 59.30 versus 46.39. We had over 10,000 contracts traded versus 5,000 contracts. We had over 5,800 versus 2,600. Then if you go the other direction, we had 29,753 versus 12,629. 
we had a little bit of a call imbalance on that strike price right there and this strike price right here. But for the most part, you have a very heavy put imbalance. And if you go down to the next month, you see the put imbalance continued. What does that tell us? It tells us that somebody's taking a position. Doesn't matter who it is. You don't know who it is. Doesn't matter. Somebody's taking a position biased towards a bearish trade. Well, if this is all building up the day before, or maybe a few hours before the big move starts, do you think that could be an edge for you? And the answer is absolutely. It could be a huge edge for you. So here's how we're gonna use this information. When the option volume starts to reveal an imbalance, generally speaking, these are very broad rules, we need to get into more details, but broad rules here. When the option volume starts to build the imbalance, put a trigger, at the high or the low of the spike day. Now, what does that mean? It almost sounds like a code, right? It's not. Um, the spike is the spike of option imbalance, okay? High or low. If it's a call imbalance, you're gonna put the trigger at the high of the day. If it's a put imbalance, you can put it at the low of the day, okay? So I just needed to put it all in one sentence, in one screen, because I was trying to keep my slides short. So. Place the trigger at the high or the low of the day of the spike of imbalance. Now, here's the other way we can use this. That, that would be for a more directional entry. Now, oh, my pen is doing its thing again. You guys don't know this, but my pen likes to get really moody on me, and then I start writing, and it delays when it writes on the screen, so it's really weird. Um, anyway, uh, so that's for a directional trade, but here's the other signal that we can get from this, and I've started using this very effectively, um, it can tip you off to the close of a trade when the opposite volume is starting to build up. So let's say you're in a big bullish trend and you're just optimistic as can be, because let's be honest, when you're in a big bullish trend, nothing tells you it's going down, right? I mean, whenever things are going up, you know, all your moving averages, all your trend signals look like everything's going to keep going. And of course, you got inside, you know, sites such as, you know, your, your candlestick patterns, such as overbought, oversold, you know, stochastics moving down, yada, yada. But what if you're at the very, very top of the day of the, of the swing? I mean, within a day or two of the top and suddenly you see a surge of option volume in the opposite direction. That's a pretty good tip off. And it's going to come in a day or two or three before most of your exit signals. The one signal that it will pair really nicely with is our candlestick reversal signals, which I don't have time to get into, but I'm just going to drop that little breadcrumb for you. Um, as you start to dig into this a little bit, be sure to pair these option imbalances with your candlestick signals. Those one or two day signals that tell you when, when things are spinning in the opposite direction, when they're turning around. Be sure to pair um, the volume with those signals. All right, now let's take a look here at a couple of charts. And here's an example on spiders. This was yesterday, uh, early in the day, actually, before the uh, sell-off at the end of the day. So what we saw is we saw the, the option imbalance. I showed you that already. And here's the way you would set this up. If you wanted to continue this trade, you put your entry right here at the bottom. So the next day you would get into the trade. The next day, if the trade continues through the low of the day, you would get in, okay? And that would be your bearish entry. If it was a bullish setup, you'd, you'd put it at the high. So let's, let's hypothetically, I'm gonna draw this on the screen because this is not even, it's not even kind of real. Uh, but just in a hypothetical universe, let's say that we saw a put, or sorry, a call imbalance, and let's say you saw a candlestick like this, okay? Which would be a bullish one white soldier uh, candlestick pattern. Okay, so let's say you saw a candlestick pattern like this and a strong call imbalance. Let's say we had a two to one. You know, we had two calls purchased for every put that was purchased. You put your entry at the top of the day and the next day when the trade continues, then you, you go bullish into that trade. Makes sense? So that's kind of your very short term swing entry opportunity. And of course, in this picture, the one I just drew with that bullish entry, uh, it totally breaks all my rules because it was not going with the trend at all. So that was just for a hypothetical scenario there. Just wanted you to understand the uh, entry portion of that. All right, now let's look at the exit portion of this. So right at the top of this swing, let's say that you had traded the spiders, you traded an index fund over the last few months, you had the big sell-off, things started to turn around, you're building your optimism again, it pulls back, you rebuild your optimism, and you're all excited, you're thinking, you know, we've had this 18-month bullish market, it's been amazing, and oh, everything is wonderful, lollipops and bubble gum, we've had the pullback, now we're ready to go. And you get up here, you're not even to your previous resistance level, and suddenly you have a huge put imbalance. 
what do you do? Well, that should be a big old warning sign to you. You say, oh, crud, I've got a sudden put imbalance. I'm not even to my highs yet. I'm getting some, in this case, you know, bearish um, um, three three day candlestick patterns that uh, my brain literally just forgot the name of our, our candlestick pattern here. Uh, evening star reversal. That's what I'm trying to come up with. You know, we got a bearish evening star reversal candlestick pattern here right at the top. We haven't even made it to our resistance level and I suddenly have a huge put imbalance. That's a big warning. And by the way, for those of you who know the rest of your technical analysis, this becomes part of a three point reversal, right? So now we've got a lower low, a lower high. Oh, crud. Could we be setting up for a bearish trade? Could we be setting up for a primary trend reversal? So you start to have all these thoughts coming through your head. And what you're getting from the put buyers is you're getting this insight that, you know what? Yeah, turns out there's a lot of bearish bias in the marketplace. And by the way, this was all before the alleged trade war with China. This was all before any of the stuff that you see in the news. The news follows the price of the market. It never sets the price. That's a big myth. People always think, oh, well, the market reacted to the news. No, no, no. That's the way the news spins it. The market's going to do what the market's going to do. News reacts to it. I mean, just think back to Occupy Wall Street, right? People are killing themselves in front of Wall Street, protesting capitalism and trading, and the market keeps going up. Right? One would think that would be a negative news event, but no, the market just kept going higher. And then, you know, think back a year ago or a year and a half ago, whenever it was, 2015, when suddenly, you know, the Chinese economy, remember that few couple years ago, we woke up and the market's down 700 points. And they say, oh, it's because the Chinese economy has been going down. You think that it really took us eight months to figure out the Chinese economy had been going down? No. People didn't wake up one day and say, oh, the Chinese economy is bad. We're going to sell off 700 points today. People did not wake up and say that. That's the story the news attached to it. So just understand that. You can see the bias of the traders building up on the chart. It starts to build up. You're going to get little signals of sentiment, such as your candlesticks, your evening star reversals, dark cloud cover, whatever candlestick patterns are showing up. They're going to start to show up in the logical places where the buyers and the sellers show up at your pivot areas. And when you see these imbalances of volume, biased, bullish, or bearish, it gives you an insight. It's like, ah, oh, look at that. Something's building up. And then sure enough, three or four days later, the bearish trend starts, and now the news comes out. Oh, we're in a trade war with China. This is just awful. It might even be Russia. I mean, that's the way the news is, right? That's why I don't even pay attention. The news is just stupid. I don't even pay attention to the news. It will, it will mess you up. Just turn the news off and watch the chart. Watch what the buyers and sellers are doing because that's where the money's made. All right, now let's make some observations about what I've just shared with you. Uh, I can't see any of the questions or comments, so I'm going to assume you guys are tracking with me. I kind of feel like I'm a little bit on Lonely Island out here because I can't see the feedback, which uh, I really like to see the feedback. But I'm going to assume you guys are tracking with me, and I haven't, haven't uh, lost you anywhere out there. Um, so here's some observation. Volume is cumulative. And what do I mean by that? It shows both the buyers and the sellers. So if you're coming into the marketplace and you're doing a credit spread, is that a buying or selling volume? Well, the answer is yes. One strike price is selling volume. One strike price is buying volume. But if you just look at an individual strike price, pick a strike price, the, the 250 put, whatever. Um, if you just look at a strike price and you see that the volume is 10,000 contracts were traded, that's both buyers and sellers. So the first thing that came to my mind whenever I started studying this is I said, well, how do I know that the bias is bullish versus bearish if they are trading calls, for example? Because if I'm buying calls, I might be bullish, but if I'm selling calls, then I would be bearish. So how do I know that that volume is really reflective of the bias? So you guys can kind of say, oh yeah, that makes sense. Because the volume is, is cumulative. It, it builds up based on buyers and sellers. And every time there's a buyer in the market, there is also a seller. So how do we know that it's really biased in that direction? And I'm going to show you in just a second. The next thing you need to re realize about volume is volume is spread over multiple strike prices. Okay. So the individual volume, like I've already shown you on, this, on the um, option chain, the individual volume is for an individual strike price. But when we look at cumulative volume, when we look at the bias, you need to look at multiple strike prices. So when I did my example just a second ago, and we'll look at some more in a minute, 
But when I did my example, I showed you, you know, several strike prices all the way across the option chain. And we saw consistent put imbalance um, for the spiders across multiple strike prices. If you just see it on one strike price, it doesn't mean so much. But if you see it on a bunch of strike prices, it starts to tell you a lot of insight that there's a lot of buildup here. And so what we need to do is we need to assimilate that data better. And I've got a little bit of a technique I'm going to teach you here. I'm going to show you a tool and then I'm going to show you the one, two punch for blending up the trend and the uh, option volume here. OK, um, so really fast, let me just address this issue right here and then I'm going to get into the next um, the next portion of this talk here. Um, buyers and sellers, all that volume shows up for each individual option strike price. But what you also may not realize is when you're going into buying a option, the market maker, unless you're doing a limit order, the market maker is expected to make the market. So the market maker in many cases is the selling side of that trade. And they're going to figure out how to balance it out on, um, on their spread. Okay, so don't worry about why they're selling. What you're seeing is a huge demand for the option. And this is what I had to dig into. I don't have this tool available. I have a beta version, uh, but I've, I've got a tool that Tom is developing that shows us what the individual volume is. And it shows, if, if, if shows us if it's a buyer just buying a long call or put uh, versus a, a spread versus it's tied to a covered call or something. And so when that tool is available, it's gonna really help us even further dig into this volume component. But I really went back and forth with Tom and I said, Tom, no, 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 this volume is cumulative. You cannot tell a bias from it. And when he started showing me and then we, when he showed me that tool that he's got, like I say, it's super beta. I can't show it to anybody. It's not even beta, it's like alpha. But uh, he's developing this tool where we can go in and see what the volume was. And what we're discovering is after we started digging into it, turns out the vast majority of that volume are new long positions. And the selling side of that is the market maker making the market. And so that's just insightful for us. And that's why I let this first objection go. And I said, okay, it's true. When there's an option imbalance, it really is revealing a bias for us, all right? So let me show you how we can cumulatively build this up. You've heard me kind of talking about the tool. I generally, in a, in a talk like this, I wanna give you tools that you can go use immediately. So most of the time, if you look at the vast majority of the training that I do at TradeSmart, I'm giving you tools that you can use with any platform. It just so happens that this tool is not one of those. So forgive me for that. But this particular tool is a patented uh, system that Tom Joseph has developed called the Options Volume Map. And uh, it's in the Option Dynamic software, which we do sell on TradeSmart uh, website. But let me just walk you through it. I'm not here to sell you the software. I'm just here to walk you through what you can get from this. And you can on your own kind of do the poor man's version of this by going through the option chain, adding up the volume and seeing what the imbalance is. So I've already shown you that, but here let me show you how it kind of assimilates into one screen for us. And so let's take the uh, volume of the spiders here and notice what we've got across uh, basically seven strike prices. We've got the at the money strike price and then we're going three strike prices above and three strike prices below. And you see a huge imbalance here for the put volume for this particular strike price, which uh, was what, 260? Okay, you had a huge put imbalance. You had a huge put imbalance at this strike price and the ones in the middle are relatively similar. And then this one was a pretty good size put imbalance. If you add all that up, it turns out there was 292,000 puts that were bought or sold and 142,000 calls. So we actually had a put imbalance that had a ratio of 2.1. We had a little bit more than two to one uh, puts being bought or sold versus the calls. That's pretty insightful. That means there's a pretty heavy put imbalance in the market on that day. Okay. Now, if you go out a month, if you go to, to May of 2018, it's the May 18th expiration, uh, we discover there's a 1.6 imbalance. If you go out to the June expiration, you discover there's a two imbalance. So there's still two to one more puts than we have calls that are being sold or, or bought. Okay. Now, what does that tell us? It tells us that there's a lot of speculators buying puts. It tells us there's a lot of investors hedging long stock positions with puts. You probably don't have a whole lot of bull put spreads being written suddenly. 
you're not going to have 292,000 shares of naked naked puts and bull put spreads being sold. You, you're just not going to do that. So what it's showing us clearly is there's a bearish bias to the trade. And so that's how we look at this. We look at it through the multiple strike prices across multiple months, uh, certainly the front month, the front month. And by the way, the monthly options are way better than the weekly options. The weekly options just don't have enough volume to really indicate the bias, but go monthly. And if you get down to less than six days to expiration, we definitely go to the second month. Uh, but we look at the monthly options and we're looking at the imbalance between the, the calls and the puts across multiple strike prices. This tool puts it all on one screen, but like I've already shown you, you can just do this on your own uh, by looking through the option chain. Okay, so that's part one here. The part one is identify the option imbalance. Part two is to pair it up with J-Dub's philosophy of trading. What is J-Dub's theory number one? Trade with the trend. Trade with the trend because the trend is where all the momentum is. If you learn enough about what I teach, you will learn that I really believe strongly in trading with momentum. Part of that's because I'm an options trader and I buy a lot of calls and puts. And when you're buying a call and put, the lack of momentum is like death because you're fighting time decay. So I've just conditioned myself that I'm trading with the momentum and I want to buy in, the, in a trade that's already moving. I want to trade in the direction of the trend because that's where all the momentum's at. Okay, even if I'm doing spreads, now I apply it to the momentum because it just puts the winning, the winning trades right into your category. It's just like win, 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 win. You know, you do a high, high probability trade, trade strategy like a credit spread, and um, you know, you add that to a trend. Instead of doing bull put spreads that are counter trend, just do bull put spreads that are with the trend, and you're like, oh, I win like 98% of these. It's amazing because you already got a high win percentage, and you're doing it with the trend. Trade with the trend. All right, now here's step two of how we're going to create this setup. And this isn't a full setup. This is just the, the tool that I'm showing you today. Number one, trade with a trend. And we're going to use moving averages for that, by the way. Number two, identify the cumulative option imbalance. And the magic number that we've kind of discovered is 1.5 or greater. 1.5 or greater is the magic number. And then we're going to trade in that direction. Okay. And as a bonus, there's a pivot area that matches this. Now, if I'm using language you're not familiar with, a pivot area just means it's a swing high, swing low. It's at an established supporter resistance. You know, if you're kind of in the middle between pivot areas, less viability. But if you are at a pivot area and you see all these things adding up, it's kind of like ding, 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 ding. This is awesome. All right, so let's walk through these things. And then we're going to actually walk through a trade setup. Now, I think I'm supposed to be done by 11.15, but we started slightly late. So, um, moderator, could you just type in the chat here what time I'm supposed to be done? Because I'm supposed to have 45 minutes here. So, uh, I'll try to just go through this really quickly here. So, notice the moving averages. We're below the averages. We've got a moving average cross. This is a bearish signal. Okay, there's our bearish trend. We've identified we're in a bearish trend. That's all it takes right there. We're in the moving averages. We're bearish. Now, next thing, let's look at the imbalance. Option volume imbalance, heavy imbalance, two to one to the put side, one to six to the put side, 2.0 to the put side. We got a heavy put imbalance. And then if you want to add insult to injury, look at the chart pattern that we had on here. We had a great triangle. Well, the triangle is a measured move. We can take this movement right here and we can say, you know what, based on that move right there, our target is probably right down here at $250. How do I know that? Because I came right in here. I looked at the high and I looked at the low. The space there is about uh, $15 to $18. Look at the breakout here. There's your measured move right there. We come up with about $250. There's your measured move. Now we look in here. We've got the breakout of the pattern. We're below the moving averages. We're continuing the bearish trend. We've got bearish candlesticks. Add to it. We've got the bearish gap. Fantastic. And look at this put imbalance. This is a high probability trade for us. And this actually started to build up two days ago after the uh, after the bearish gap here. And it just continued at very high levels yesterday. And when I took these screenshots yesterday, it was early in the day. Uh, it got even better by the end of the day. It's fantastic. So, all right, that's the general setup right there. And if I stop talking right now, which I could do if I need to, um, Okay, they say I have until 25 minutes past the hour. So I have another 10 minutes. So let me go through a trade setup with you. I want to walk through uh, the whole setup and the whole sequence. And this is on Disney. This is a trade that we did 
Uh, we talked about it. I actually sent an email out uh, announcing it when we were doing it. We actually did this full disclosure of what we did. We did this with a bear call spread. We did it with a bear call spread. So Dave was talking earlier about uh, credit spreads and we did this particular trade with a bear call spread. It was a directional trade, but we set it up with the spread, just giving you that little uh, insight. Um, well, you could have done this by buying puts. It doesn't matter. In our case, the, the one that we set up, we happened to do with the bear call spread. All right, so here was the setup for Disney. Uh, this was starting on 313, that's March 13th. And uh, you notice that we're below the moving averages. We're, we've retraced up to the averages. We've got a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern. It's ready to turn down, great. And look at your put imbalance. We've got a 1.6 imbalance to the put side. Now, remember, what was our magic number? Our magic number was um, 1.5. So here we've got 1.6. What we've found is if it's anything 1.5 or greater, it tends to be a pretty good signal. Would we pair it up with the trend and with candlesticks? It's a really good signal. And so we got a one, two, three punch here. All right. So now let's go to the next next trading day here. Here's what happened. Oh, sorry. Uh, entry point is at the low of that candle. Entry is at the low of the candle. Next day, we didn't actually hit the low of the candle. It was just kind of inside the previous day. The following day, the trade confirms. You get into the trade down here at uh, whatever that price point was. I didn't mark it on the screen here. And since I did a slide, I can't hover over it. But it was about uh, 103 and change. All right. Next day, the trade continues. By the way, notice your put imbalance is building now. Okay. Our put imbalance is building. But we started to build this put imbalance way back here. We started to see it early in the move as you'd retrace to your moving averages and started to continue bearish. We saw the, the, the put imbalance coming in. Next day, the put imbalance goes down. So you're starting to see that as we get to our support level, we still have the imbalance, but it's not nearly as high as it was because traders are starting to question, am I at support? Are we going to build the support here? That's what every trader is questioning, whether you realize it or not. So you might take your profit there if you want to. The next day, we have a little spinning top at that support level. Put in balance stays at 1.3. All right. So now you're, you're definitely questioning, should I take my profits? And the answer would be, if you want to, you could take your profits there. What I would tell you, especially with our credit spread, we let it run. I, I said, you know, look at the 10 period moving average. If we start moving above the 10 period, then we'll rethink this. But at this point, as long as you're above, you're below the 10 period moving average, you're going to be in the clear. The next day, what did we get? We got a little bullish candle, right? Wrong. It's a green candle, but look at this long upper shadow traded right to the 10 period moving average. Put in balance stays, but that long upper shadow at the 10 period is telling us that the sentiment is still bearish. We're pushing up into the moving averages and we can't get the support. We can't get going. And so it starts to sell off a little bit more. The next day, what do we have? This is on 322. The bears continue. We start to break below support. Look at your put imbalance now. Boom. Huge put imbalance. The next day, we move it forward. Huge bearish breakout. And uh, 7.2 is your put imbalance. That was yesterday. Where do you think this trade's going? It's pretty easy. We can look here. We can say, here's your next support level. 97.50 is going to be our next target. In our case, our, strat our, our um, credit spread has already gotten down to zero, so we were able to close it. We made 31% on that credit spread, 31% in a little bit over a week. That's not too bad. Most people are happy to make 15 to 20% a year. We made 31.5% in one week, a little bit over a week. And by the way, it was a high probability trade. I know Dave just talked about credit spreads uh, and his strategy, the 11 hour strategy is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a great strategy. It's a technique. Um, the spread, credit spread itself is just a structure for how you can approach the strategy. And so that brings up the, the next question. Okay, Jeremy, great. I see we follow the trend. I see we're gonna use the option imbalance. Now the question is, which strategy do I wanna use? And you know, people say, Jeremy, should I buy puts? Should I, should I sell calls? You know, should I do credit spreads? What should I do? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. There's really not a right or wrong. This is the interesting thing about traders. Strategy is like crack to traders. And so here's my little checklist. You do your analysis, then you pick your strategy. And the strategy is really simple. Which strategy works with the direction of the trade? If you're in a bearish trade, pick a bearish strategy. If you're in a bullish trade, pick a bullish strategy. So you just come down here to bearish strategy, say, you know what? I probably should either sell short 
buy puts, do a bear call spread. If you're a futures trader and you have that kind of option volume insight that the spiders are going down, you think it'd be a good time to maybe short some, some SPX futures? Yeah, it'd be great. So whatever your strategy is, if it, if it lines up with that analysis, the analysis was that the spiders were going down. In the second example, the analysis was that Disney is going down. Now I have the information, just apply a strategy that will win with that information. And that's it, that's how simple it really is. All right, so let me recap this in three simple steps and then I'll be done here by uh, 25 after the hour. So here's your three keys to trading option volume and getting an edge. Number one, trade with the trend. Boom, trade with the trend. Number two, identify the cumulative option bias, okay? You can do that manually by looking through the option chain or you can get a tool like the um, software that I'm using and um, you can look at it through those eyes. Number three, apply an appropriate strategy. If it's a bullish bias, apply a bullish strategy. If it's a bearish bias, apply a bearish strategy. And that's how simple it is. How many of you find that interesting and maybe a little bit insightful? Unfortunately, I can't see your feedback, so I'm just going to assume that you guys think it's fantastic and you probably want to learn more about it. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the class, um, this is a pretty new technique that we've just started working with over the last six to eight months, and I'm just now finally putting it into a mastery class. I'm excited about it. I'm going to teach this class coming up April 4th. And what I'm going to do in this class is I'm going to show you uh, more insights on trading with option volume. I'm going to introduce a tool called the Elliott Wave Turning Point Tool that actually helps us with identifying the trend and where your targets are. It puts it all into one tool. It's awesome. It makes it so simple. And then I'll also share with you a new strength indicator. Um, and we're gonna put all that together into this April 4th class. It's about a 90 minute to a two hour class. It's coming up on April the 4th. It's uh, one of our mastery series here. Now the regular price on this is $249. Uh, today we're gonna do it for $49. You can get that at tradesmartu.com slash special. And uh, this special is case sensitive because uh, it's really just going to redirect you to a, a um, to a shopping cart where the number was so complicated. I said, well, we can't do that. No one will know that. So we just did this URL, tradesmartu.com slash special, all lowercase special. And uh, you can get this. And here's the bonuses that I want to give you today. Number one, I want to show you, I just want to give you this uh, PDF on windfall profits. This is going to show you how to trade the trend the way that I approach it. I, I started off today saying that my philosophy is to trade with the trend. So I've put that into a little ebook called Windfall Profits, How to Catch Big Trends and Take Huge Profits. And it's really just my trend trading philosophy. It goes through the moving averages and how I approach that. So I'm gonna include that for free. And then here's the other one. This is one I'm really excited about. Uh, this is our core program, Foundations of Stocks and Options. We sell this on our website and we've sold it for years, uh, almost 10 years we've sold this for $897. And um, I just want to give it to you guys today. Uh, they told me that I needed to give you a really great offer with a whole lot of value. And I said, well, what else could I do but give them my entire trading system and foundations of stocks and options that we sell for almost $1,000. Just give that to you guys for the $49. And here's the cool thing. This is starting April 3rd. So this is an eight week program or sorry, a four week program, eight classes. Uh, starting on April 3rd on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you can't make it, then we've got the videos. You can watch the recordings. And all together, that's $1,146 if you went and bought it all on our website. But uh, hey, today you can get it for just $49 by going to tradesmartu.com slash special, all lowercase. It is exactly 1125. Boom. We did it in 45 minutes. Raul, I'm done. You you hit the, the goalpost right on. That's <laughs> awesome, Jeremy. Thank you. It's a miracle. I've never done anything in 45 minutes. Well, I'm impressed. Listen, I got a comment from Trey. He says, Mr. Whaley is an awesome guest. Very interesting. Thank you, Trey. Uh, and another, there was a question earlier on, just a quick one. What is that charting platform that you were using? Yeah, so the charting platform I'm using is called Option Dynamics. And um, you can get it on our website. Uh, let me pull this over for you. Um, uh, hold on here. I got the wrong page. This is foundation. So see, if you go to our website and you go find foundation stocks and options, it's $897. Um, see, it really is that price. I'm not making it up. Uh, here you go on our website. If you go to, um, tradesmartu.com and then you go to, it's actually under education. 
even though it's a software. Click on education at the top and then go to the bottom where it says software or you can just click the link that says software. The bottom of that page, option dynamics by dynamic trend and um, you can get that software right here. Now, I could tell you to go buy it, which I think you should. I could also give you a little tip that if you show up in our Foundations of Stocks and Options class that we've bundled with this, that's going to start on April 3rd, I cannot legally give a demo away of this software because I have to pay for it and it's against my reseller agreement. So I can't do the demos on it. But here's what I can do. I can bundle it with another course. And in April 3rd's class, at the end of that program, after you discover all of how we teach you, I'm going to put this into a bundle and you can actually get a couple of months of it with the bundle of some more training. So uh, that's a way that you can get there or you can just go buy it and um, it's 249 bucks a month and that includes data and everything. That is awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Karen in Florida says, and we'll finish that off with this comment. She says, I like his energy. I like your energy too, Jeremy. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. Um, you too can have this kind of energy if you just drink a hyperactive uh, <laughs> caffeine shake in the mornings. Well, listen, you and I will uh, talk offline about that. I'm interested. You, how much is that? How much is that program? <laughs> well, we'll talk soon. Thank you again. All right. You guys have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Our next presenter is the very esteemed, very charming Rob Booker. He's going to be on shortly. I'm going to just give him the presenter controls. Rob, let me know if... You have the presenter controls, and if you can hear me. I can hear you, and I have the controls. How are you, sir? I'm great. Nice to be here. Likewise. I have a pleasure to have you here. Looking forward to it. You're, uh, this is the big finish here. I'm going to get Vince to give you a short intro, and then we'll let you have at it. Rock on. Excellent. Our next speaker is Rob Booker. He is a well-known currency trader, educator, and the host of the Traders Podcast. He started his trading career in 1999, and his methods, ideas, and knack for teaching uh, others have helped shape the growth of online trading. Uh, his 2007 book, Adventures of a Currency Trader, uh, has influenced a generation of traders who aspire to trade for a living. He lives in Houston, Texas with his wife, four children, and three dogs. Rob, it's great to have you on. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, looking forward to your presentation. Hey, thanks a lot. I'm really happy to be here. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome. My name is Rob Booker, and uh, super happy to meet you, get to know you better. Some of you know me already, some of you don't. Um, and I just want to kind of talk to the charts. I don't have anything for sale. I do have a free indicator for you at the end of the presentation. And I uh, want to start off by telling you that I love you. And I'm happy it's Saturday and kids are enjoying iPad time at the house. And I'm here at the office and I'm going to head on back and play some Minecraft. So I'll get out of your way and uh, you'll get out of my way in about 45, 44 minutes and 20 seconds. All right. I'm a big believer in simplifying everything. If you like to do things the complicated way, then uh, this is not the right presentation for you. But if you like simple and you just want to make money and you want to quit your dumb job or you want to tell the creepy guy in human resources that he should stop looking at you strange when he walks around the halls, you want to tell him to shove it, uh, or if you just want to have some extra income and you don't want to sit in front of the screen all day long and you don't want to have to learn how to redo the quadratic equation or reinvent the theory of relativity, then you're in the right place. I'm going to show you a couple tricks that I do uh, and, and tell you a little bit about who I am. So uh, we got some charts in front of us right here. I'm, I'm assuming you can see those charts and I hope you can. I'm going to draw all over the screen and uh, tell you some stories and I hope you have a good time. So it was 2013 and I was traveling across the country and I was sleeping overnight at the homes of traders all over the United States. And I, I went on this tour. I was in like episode 200 of the traders podcast, maybe a hundred and something. And I decided to go on the road and sleep overnight at traders houses and then interview them in the morning and look at their charts and see what they did. And I met some incredible people. I met Dwayne in Colorado and um, he was just, he had like, I don't know, 500 trading books and 
just tons of education and he had simplified trading into his own little system and it was inspiring. And then I met with Ryan in Knoxville, Tennessee and had a barbecue, maybe the best barbecue of my life. And I met with these individuals all across the country. And the one thing that stood out to me as I met the traders who were successful and talked to them and compared them to the traders who were struggling, the traders who were successful were doing one thing. They were doing one thing great. And I'm going to show you my one thing today, but th that was maybe one of the most influential experiences of my life. And if you have not read this book by Gary Keller and uh, Jay Papasan, th the inventor of the Papasan chair, I'm just kidding. That's not true. Um, if you have not read this book, you should leave this webinar and you should go buy this book and you should sit down and read it. And then you can come back and watch the recording. This book uh, changed my life and the lives of many of the 3000 lifetime members in, in my program, my students, and, and it, this has changed our lives. And it is a book about the fact that you should always ask the question, what is the one thing I could do to make everything else that I'm trying to do easier or unnecessary? Meaning, what's the one thing you could do that obviates the need to do all kinds of other complicated garbage? I don't know one trader who trades for a living who does it in a complicated manner. Uh, in 18 years of trading, I probably know 10,000 traders by their first names. I don't say that to brag. I say that just to say I love traders. And I've been all over the world. I have traveled and slept at everybody's houses and I don't know one person trading successfully that does it in a complicated manner. Everybody that I know that does it successfully simplified it. And if that rings true to you, then give me an amen. I can't see it, but just give it to me anyway. Stand up and clap your hands. Just kidding. You're probably sitting in a Starbucks and that would be embarrassing. But let me just, if you just want to say it in your head, you want to do it the simple way, just give me an amen. All right. The other thing that I've noticed, this is point number two, is that nobody ever made any money by um, sitting on their hands and uh, being timid and frightened. That, that is like a really great way to not make any money. All right. So there I said it. That's, that's all I want to say about that subject. Let's talk, let's do hardcore technical analysis, hardcore, simple technical analysis. So here we go. I'm going to draw a circle on the screen here around three red lines that you see on my screen. These are what I call Knoxville divergences. Knoxville div. Now I was sitting after I met with Ryan Heron, uh, who went on to be one of the most successful traders and students I've ever had. Uh, I was sitting in a coffee shop in Knoxville, Tennessee. I was sitting there with my computer and I, and I, I bet I can even old Java city, Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm sitting in this coffee shop. There it is. This is awesome. I was sitting in this place in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I was having a cappuccino and some kind of little beverage. And that's the door right there. That's really cool. I was sitting on the other side of this door, right in this area where you see um, that guy standing. And there's a, actually, there's a whole other door right over here. And I was, I was sitting inside the coffee shop and I was programming an indicator for my charts. And I was sitting there having my cappuccino. I was reflecting on the first 20 days of the travel across the country that I'd had. And I, and I had this major epiphany that the, the divergences that I loved to trade, which are the, it's the disagreement between price and an oscillator, could be improved if I simply added a little bit of a filter. And I'm going to show you how I built it. And then I want to talk to you about setting up some trades. All right, so this, I don't know if you do stocks or if you do currencies, you do futures, you do cryptos. We're going to look at all of them today. We've got plenty of time. We've got 38 minutes and 17 seconds, and I want to make every minute valuable to you. These red lines that you see on my screen are Knoxville divergences. They are early warning signs and suggestions, but not guarantees that price is going to reverse. On the screen in front of you, you can actually see those red lines on top of the US dollar, Canadian dollar which is the worst, foulest garbage currency pair in the world. I'm just kidding. It's not that bad. Um, those bearish Knoxville divergences are suggestions that price is going to reverse. And Knoxville divergence might get it wrong the first time, but the second time, 
usually gets it right. Sometimes it takes three or four times. Knoxville divergence, as I mentioned, is the disagreement between price and an oscillator. As you can see in this example that I've labeled number one, price is traveling upwards. However, the momentum indicator, I'm just going to write mom, set to 21 is moving down at the same time. Momentum is falling, but price is rising. Things that should be aren't as they should be. Things that would be aren't as they are. Things are going up, but momentum is going down. Something is amiss at the circle K. There's a glitch in the matrix. There's a black cat walking across the staircase. Something is amiss. Price is going up, and yet the momentum is falling. It's an early warning sign that price is going to reverse. Now this is divergence. This was invented in 1861 by Abraham Lincoln. Before he went into politics, you probably don't know this, he was a technical analyst. That's not true. He wanted to be president, not a technical analyst. I just wanna be a technical analyst. This divergence is simple, it's effective. It was invented a million years ago. It was probably traded by, by Chinese rice traders in 1465. I didn't invent it. I didn't invent anything, but it works. It's not perfect, but divergence is awesome. Divergence works because when something is traveling upward, it should stay going upwards, but sometimes it doesn't. Imagine throwing a ball into the air, throwing, oh, let's do juggling. So like my safe search is on Google, so nothing weird pops up. Ah, there we go. What a beautiful picture of Ricky Gervais juggling. That's not actually Ricky Gervais. Now he's throwing these balls up in the air, right? You know that, I know that, that's obvious. And this ball is higher than this ball. Ball number two is higher than ball number one. But ball number one is traveling faster. Ball number two is slowing down. Momentum is falling. It's rising. It's higher than it was a minute ago because it's been living in Colorado. Just kidding, that's a little marijuana joke. It's higher than it was a minute ago, but it's traveling more slowly. Momentum is falling. That's divergence. Now, I remember reading about divergence back in the early 2000s. John Murphy's technical analysis of the financial markets. I remember reading about that. Good for, good for divergence. But divergence has this one little problem. Something might be divergent, and you can find divergence a hundred different places, but it's not enough. It's not enough that it's divergent. We need something else. So what I did was sitting in the old city Java coffee shop in Knoxville, Tennessee, I added a filter. And that filter was the relative strength index, the RSI. RSI, bringing you joy at overbought and oversold levels. The RSI is the relative strength index, is an oscillator. It goes overbought and it suggests that maybe price has done something abnormal. Like, I don't know, I'm not even gonna say it. Price has done something abnormal. Knoxville divergence, or KD for short, is when price is moving upward, but momentum is falling. And across the same set of candles that created the divergence, the relative strength index invented by Warren Harding in 1917, not actually true, when the relative strength index is also overbought in that same group of candles. It's a filter, it's an add-on, it's a confirmation, which is usually only for eight-year-old Catholics, confirmation. But now it's also for currency, stocks, futures, and cryptos. Knoxville divergence, once again, is the disagreement between price and momentum plus overbought or oversold. It prints a red line on top of the candles when there is a suggestion, not a guarantee, that price is ready to reverse. You could see here on the charts, there are two different examples of Knoxville divergence. The first one, you could say fails. The second one succeeds and accurately predicts that price is going to fall. I don't believe in leading or lagging indicators. I think that whole conversation is interesting and yet I don't really care about it I just care about percentage accuracy. And everybody always wants to know, how accurate is this? Well, the robot that I built that trades these automatically trades with about a 75 to 85% accuracy. It depends on 
which financial instrument you're trading, and how big of a profit target you're going for. But it's super accurate. It's super awesome. We'll talk about that later. The second Knoxville divergence that you see on the screen in front of us right now printed a red line across the tops of the candles that were rising, but momentum was falling. And at the same time, the relative strength index was so overbought, it could see its feet by looking up or something like that. And that was an early warning sign that price would fall. Now on this chart also, we have bullish Knoxville divergences, which just printed on this 60 minute chart. Sometimes people ask, well, what time frame chart does this work best for? Well, the answer is, and by the way, this indicator is free. I'm not here to sell you this indicator today. I'm here to give it to you for free because free is the best price and you're awesome. Okay, bullish Knoxville divergence. Price is falling, but the momentum is rising. Rising momentum. It's like dropping into the ocean from a distance. You're going to fall really quickly into the water, but the volume of the water around you is going to slow your descent. And eventually, the air in your lungs is going to bring you back up. You go down, you come back up. The price is falling. The momentum indicator is rising. That says, hey, we might be going up soon. And at the same time all that was happening, the relative strength index across the same group of candles or bars was oversold. When a flight's oversold, you get kicked off the flight. When this currency is oversold at the same time that momentum is rising, you get price going up. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty fantabulous. And I use this to plan trades. Now I can use this to plan trades. I don't know what your favorite financial instruments are. Maybe Apple. Apple's bullish divergent right now. I'm not sure that that means anything right this second, but you can see here that Apple printed a couple of bearish Knoxville divergences over at the right, left, excuse me. And that somewhat predicted that there was an early warning sign that price was going to fall. Now we're getting a bullish Knoxville divergence and it's an early warning sign that price may begin to rise. Today, I'd like to share with you a simple method for combining Knoxville divergence, maybe just with trend lines or maybe even with Fibonacci. Now I'm gonna use my powers of ESP and I'm just gonna figure out if some of you wanna use trend lines or Fibonacci. Um, Fibonacci wins every time. I don't even have to close my eyes and do ESP because Americans and everyone across the world is absolutely obsessed with Fibonacci. Now, if you wanna look at trend lines as well, we'll save some time to do that also. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right away that if you already want to download this indicator, you can go to robbooker.com, click on free indicator at the top of the page. And if you want to get started on this, you can download the indicator for free for TradeStation, eSignal, Thinkorswim, although Thinkorswim is awesome as a broker. It's garbage for charts, so I don't recommend it, but we've got it for that. MetaTrader, Sierra Charts, and a variety of other trading platforms. You type your name in there and your email address. You can download the indicator. And then I will just spam the ever loving, just kidding, I won't. I won't spam you, I promise. Okay. So after we see Knoxville divergences, we could use a simple Fibonacci uh, sequence to plan a trade. So I wanna show you, I wanna look around here for some, some some good examples. Oh, this is one right here. Oh, this is really nice. This is going to show us exactly what we want. I actually um, set this trade up recently, and this this could be should be something really special. This is the Canadian dollar, Swiss franc, Schweizer franken. Now, as you could see here on the daily time frame, doesn't matter what time frame you use. You could apply this to the one minute charts if you want to. You could change you could change this to the one week charts. Doesn't matter. But step one is you find a Knoxville divergence on your charts. All right, step one, done. We see it right here, the line completed. Wonderful, excellent, marvelous. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our Fibonacci retracement and we're gonna start drawing at the, sw at the swing high or the highest point that we can see going back 50 to 100 bars or candles. We're gonna drag that Fibonacci down. Nice, like, like that. All right, then we drag that down. 
and we end it. We end the Fibonacci at the bottom where the Knoxville divergence line terminated. I'll be back. And then something really interesting happens. I'm going to click here so I can draw on my screen. Thanks, Microsoft Surface Book 2. What we have here is we have a break above the 23%, the 23.6% retracement level. You can also see here I added in the 0.15. Three retracement level or the 1.53 of whatever you want. You know, people call it the 23.6, the 1.53. These breaks of these levels give us high probability trades, super high probability trades. And if you trade from the longer term charts, congratulations, you don't have to sit in front of your screen all day. You could just come home and look at your screen. So what I like to do is wait for a Knoxville divergence to occur on a daily chart. Check the charts after the market's closed or about five o'clock Eastern time. And then I plan trades that fill up the spaces between the FIB levels. A trade from the 15% FIB level to the 23% FIB level. A buy on a break through that level and an exit when it hits the 23 that is a super high probability, fantastic, marvelous way to trade from a long-term chart that doesn't require a lot of calculations, and it's super high probability. I could put a stop loss underneath the lows if I want. I could even put a stop loss underneath the candle that broke the 15% retracement if I like to have those super tight stop losses, baby. I could do that. Now, we also can have a trade when we break through the 23% retracement. But oftentimes, here's what a financial instrument will do. It will do one of these one, two, three patterns. One, it'll break through the 23. Two, it will drop back down. And three, it will go right back up and complete a move all the way to the 38. This is particularly true for the stock market. I want to look at some examples or continue these examples. And I'm just going to pull up a list of stocks that I like to look at. All right. I've sorted these stocks by price. I'm just going to see if there are any recent Knoxville divergences here, which there are. Beautiful. Oh, we got two examples here. Why don't we look at both of them? I'm going to go full screen here. Aha. We have a Knoxville divergence at the bottom of the screen on a daily chart. This is Amcor technology. They make toilet seats. I don't actually know that that's true. I just made that up. I don't care if they make toilet seats or if they make crack pipes. Doesn't matter to me. I don't really much care about the fundamentals. Not at all, really. I mean, I don't want to buy a company that's total garbage slash Groupon, but you know, I might buy just about everything else. I might get myself a list of stocks that have a strong return on investment and maybe earnings. I might go over to finviz.com, for example, click on screener. I might click on, um, you know, remove ads. And I might look at something like average volumes got to be <laughs> under 500K, over 500K. That might be good. I might uh, do a price under $15. I might look at the financial stuff, relative volume, ownership. Um, oh, fun. Here we go. Fundamental. I might look for return on investment, uh, positive return on investment. I might go really positive return on investment. 27 stocks. Now I've got a list of stocks trading under $15, which could move a lot, which I could trade with a smaller trading account. And I have a list of 27 financial instruments and I might just, I might just use that. And that's my list. And then I just plug those into my trading platform and start charting those bad boys on a daily basis. I've got my Knoxville divergence that's bullish. And when that Knoxville divergence line is complete, I might draw my Fibonacci retracement lower. And then I might buy it. And for this, I need to draw. 
So I might buy it on a break above the 15% retracement with a stop under the lows of that candle maybe, maybe a stop under here, and maybe a stop under the absolute lows all the way down here to give myself maximum happiness. I might buy it on a break of the 15 and get out of that trade when it hits the 23. Might get in again on a break of the 23 and target the 38. Might do the same when it breaks the 38 and go to the 50 and so on. The farther I want this to go, the lower the probability of the trade. It's harder to run a marathon than it is to run a sprint. In other words, it's easier to have a high probability trade that sh travels a short distance. And I love high probability trades. I like to win. Now, if you're the kind of person that likes a really great risk to reward ratio, you could set your stop under those lows and target the 618 level, then your target is two, three, four times bigger than your stop loss. And you might be in the trade for a couple of weeks or a month if you're using the daily charts. Your risk to reward ratio is great. And you might have a 60% win rate. You might have a 50% win rate. You might even have a 40% win rate if you really want to get all the way up to the 618. But your winners are so much bigger than your losers that it doesn't matter when you lose. I wouldn't be here if I thought you weren't going to have a great time trading this method. So I'm not opposed to you looking back on your charts later on, pulling up all these indicators and getting a look at it yourself. Now, Amcor Technology, the world's finest creator of toilet seats, also can print a bearish Knoxville divergence. And you might say, hey, wait a minute, I thought you said this was a high quality stock. That's fine. If you're into buying puts or bear put spreads or whatever you want to do, maybe you'll want to take a look at shorting stuff like this. I will draw a Fibonacci from the low to the high. My little charting stuff was getting in the way of me dropping the level there. And I might short this stock on a break of the 15 to the 23 and from the 23 to the 38 and from the 38 down to the 50. And as you can see, we get all the way down to the 76, not without a little bit of back and forth. Once again, look at divergence, set up the fibs, and then I'm good to go. Here's an example from Blue Apron Holdings. Blue Apron, bringing you unhealthy food in the mail. All right, so um, Blue Apron, I'm not exactly sure that this is a super high quality stock. It did an IPO, it dropped immediately, and then it printed bullish Knoxville divergence. It broke the 15, couldn't get up to the 23, and then dropped from there. You know, tough to trade a brand new financial instrument. However, we set up another divergence a little bit later. Sometimes the first one is a failure and the second one is beautiful. And we rise through the 15 to the 23, from the 23 to the 38, and then we stop at the 50. Not bad. I've never traded Blue Apron. I wasn't even aware it was on this list. I just pulled this up in, in February for another webinar. Um, I didn't trade some of the names on this list. Here's AVP. Oh, I guess I had already set this one up. Oh, I took this trade. I remember this one. In November, I saw bullish divergence. <coughs> Excuse me, I had a cold recently. So in, in uh, August, September, October, uh, November, we printed bullish divergences, but never broke any of our FIB levels. And I kept drawing the FIB levels lower and lower and lower. And then this stock that was trading at like $1.85, Popped above two dollars and sixteen cents. I got out at two dollars and thirty-three cents. I remember trading a thousand shares. Uh, made like one hundred and fifty bucks in a few days. And then it broke the twenty-three. As I mentioned, it will break the twenty-three. One, drop back down to the fifteen or a little bit lower. Two, and then three, it will go on a power trip up to the thirty-eight. Beautiful, magnificent, the mighty, mighty AVP world's finest creators of I don't know what. Now, sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll see the divergences, but we'll never break any levels. This is BGFV, don't know what they do. Divergence printed, but then we never broke any FIB levels. It printed again, we never broke any FIB levels. Printed again, never broke any FIB levels. Printed again, nope, didn't print. So we just forget about drawing these levels completely. Now, you could still make a little money from the 15 to the 23, but it's kind of irrelevant. Sometimes 
the divergence will print, but the fib levels won't ever break. Let's see if, I don't even know what this is. The Saragon Networks Limited, don't know what these people do. C-R-N-T, bringing you joy. So we just click here, we draw a fib level up, and check it out. The bearish divergence leads to a break of the 15 to the 23, from the 23 to the 38, from the 38 to the 50, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. If you like trading stocks, I think you're going to love doing this. That's really the simple, effective, easy ways to look at this. I don't know. Let's look at the stock screen. Here. Let's just grab NCM, National Cinemedia. I don't really know what these people do. Maybe they hand out drugs to children. I don't really know. This really looks like it was a piece of garbage for a long time. Does this look like a high quality financial instrument? Negatory. But let's check this out. Look, it just it just recently printed bullish Knoxville divergences. So I might go draw from the highs down to the lows. <laughs> Does not break? Does it again? And look at that. It breaks from the 15 to the 23 from $5.11. Then it goes up to $6. Wow, it barely almost gets to the 23 and not quite. It does eventually get close enough to it that I would, oh, it gets all the way there. I mean, you got to put the stop all the way under the lows. And clearly this stock was a pile of garbage. I mean, dropping all that way. But then it did earnings here. You can see this gap when everybody basically had their pants on fire after earnings and dumped the stock. That's when I start looking. Everybody's panicking and I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'll take a bite on that apple. Here's another one, Fran. Fran, I never knew thee. I don't know who Fran is, but Fran printed a divergence and then never broke higher so no trade would be executed. We would use pending orders. Then it broke lower again, printed another divergence, never broke above anything. Then it's falling again, and if it prints another bullish divergence, we could go from there. Once it breaks that FIB level, if it prints the divergence, I could buy a call an in the money one. I could buy an out of the money one. I could do that too. I could buy a bull call spread. I could do whatever I want. It's America. I could do whatever I want. This is frontline. I traded this one. I like the cheaper stocks because they move more. Uh, broke above the 15, dropped back down. I like buying time because then I don't have to worry about my stops. Uh, Robinhood just added options trading, so I'm going to I'm basically going to pound that. Um, stop under the lows, eventually gets to the 23. All right, so th there it is. Now, I'm a, I'm, I've am I'm been a currency trader all my life, um, all my adult life. And so I really love trading this stuff uh, in the currency market. I love, love trading the currency market. Um, here is, for example, the British pound Canadian dollar. I don't know what this, I don't know why this level is here. I don't know what this is. I'm just going to delete it. So it prints a bearish divergence. And I could use a swing low and draw a Fibonacci retracement. I'm going to drink a little bit of water here and cough. Please excuse me. I'm going to mute myself for just a moment. I love the currency market because it's spot on and some of these FIB levels get hit exactly. They just get tagged exactly. I love trading the longer term charts also so I don't have to look at it all day long. I also, some of you already know this because some of you are my friends, I also just automate the stuff and let a robot trade these things because why would I want to do something worse than a robot could do it? And why would I want to sit in front of the screen when I can let a robot sit in front of the screen? And then I can look for refinements and improvements to the system itself while the system is running. I mean, listen, I, everybody's got their own way of doing things. I just, if I can find a simpler way to do it, that's the way I'm going to do it. If I can spend time with my family instead of sit in front of the charts or whatever, that, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I trade a lot of currencies. Um, what I do is uh, I trade the currencies on one minute Knoxville divergences. Uh, buy the British pound Canadian dollar when it prints a bullish Knoxville divergence. Um, 
or I'll look for a list of high quality stocks like we looked at over here. And then I'll just set the robot to buy that stock on all short term bullish divergences for small gains. Here's a bearish trade on the British pound Canadian dollar one minute chart. It's just a tiny little Knoxville divergence. I call that a tiny Nashville. Hold me closer, tiny Nashville. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just showing you, just showing you some, some shiz. There's some bearish divergences that, that don't quite work immediately. Bearish divergence, bearish divergence. We get a small retracement here. You don't need much, um, and then we, we, you know, we break out higher. Um, so. You know, it, it, it'll give you a little tiny retracement. On the one-minute charts, I like to take a little bite out of the market, take a little, small little bite out of the market. Oh, I love those bullish divergences on the British pound Canadian dollar. Look at that, especially with all this soft Brexit type of stuff, meaning the UK isn't, isn't really having as tough of a time with Brexit as, as people maybe feared. And so... Uh, buying the British pound lately has been a, excuse me, really nice strategy, really nice way to do things. Uh, look at a couple more examples. Oh, we were going to talk about um, trend lines. So let's say that you prefer trend lines instead of Fibonacci stuff. Let's say that, let's say that you you don't like Fibonacci. Let's say that you your let's say that one of your parents was was murdered by a mathematician whose primary area of study was Fibonacci retracements. And like Bruce Wayne, you've had a lifelong uh, revenge planned against all Fibonacci. And instead, you like support and resistance. So in your utility belt, Batman, you've placed Fibonacci. All right, fine. So what you might do is after it prints a bearish divergence here on the British pound Canadian dollar or your favorite toilet manufacturer or whatever you want to trade, doesn't matter. You'll draw a trend line underneath price and wait for that trend line to break. And if that trend line doesn't break and price travels upward, you leave your trend lines in place, perhaps. You leave them in place for a really good reason and you wait for the next divergence to show up. And then the next divergence shows up and you draw a trend line underneath price. And then you do what all successful traders do. You wait for it. You wait for it. And then it happens. Here it goes. Breaks the trend line and you sell the shiz out of this and you take profit at the next trend line. Support and resistance is a classic and super unappreciated and it's massively undervalued technique. You could study support and resistance for the next year of your trading life, master it and never need to go to another webinar or listen to another windbag, blowhard trading educator like me say one word. You'd be completely self-sufficient. It's like learning how to kill your own food and make your own shelter when you learn support and resistance. These lines, although drawn in the past, predict where price is going in the future. I don't know why, I don't know how, but they come back price will return to old levels of support and resistance like an old friend. So you just need to learn how to draw those trend lines. So you, I don't know what XP, I don't know what this is, but see this bullish divergence on the one hour chart. You could trade the four hour chart if you want. I don't care. It doesn't matter. So let's just draw some trend lines. We'll get them on our screen. We'll draw that there. We'll draw this here. That's not even going to matter. We'll draw this across the tops. Get some trend lines in here. Trend line action, baby. All right. And we'll get another one right here. All right. And then as time goes on, we see this divergence right here. We might say, all right, we'll draw a trend line across the top of that. And then we'll see if we can buy it and then it will get to the next level. And there's a gap. So maybe it wants to fill the gap eventually. So it drops. So no, it, it doesn't do that. That's fine. We'll get another trend line in place soon enough. So I'm just going to draw support and resistance all over, all over the, the, the dang place. 
I don't even know this stock. I don't even know what Express Incorporated does. But we print this bullish Knoxville divergence. We buy on a break of that trend line. And it's not surprising that it's going to hit that next trend line higher. Higher, as uh, Peter Gabriel would say. Now, I don't know where it goes from here. But um, clearly, it's it's out in space now. And we, we might need some more levels or trend lines in place. Now, I'm going to show you a couple books that mattered to me when doing support and resistance. Not that you care. but um, Bring on price patterns. Um, I used to do a radio show. Uh, <laughs> I used to do an internet radio show for traders back in 2004, 2005. And I called Martin Pring. I was going to prank call him on the show. He ended up being um, just um, just a wonderful man. So the prank call never happened. This book, Pring on Price Patterns, totally worth your time. Absolutely worth your time. Um, not a complicated, not a complicated tome. Um, Totally worth your time. It's just glorious. Uh, really, I love Marty and I love the book. Um, he's just a fantastic individual and, and this is a great book. Um, he goes through all the regular old classic price patterns in a really easy to understand manner. Um, as far as Fibonacci is concerned, it's really hard to find anybody better than um, dynamic trading. What's that guy's name? Bob, what's his face? Um, this book costs like twelve million dollars. So, and he's even said that this book is kind of update, outdated. So, I want to be careful about <coughs> recommending it to you. And it's not even pulling up. So, who cares? Um, Pring on price patterns, great book. All right, I got a few minutes left, and I'm and my cough is coming back. Here's what I want to do. I want to tell you about a couple of things. Traders Podcast, absolutely free, available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, and everywhere else. We're on episode 603. You can listen to that one. I would strongly recommend that you also take a look at uh, Trader Radio on SoundCloud and iTunes. I did 92 episodes of Trader Radio. Episode 6, Trader Radio episode... Six is one of the most popular episodes of that show. And I interviewed, um, why is that not pulling up? Anyway, um, I interviewed one of the most successful traders who's making a thousand dollars a day. Um, so, uh, trader radio is another good one. Uh, trading for a living podcast. This is another one I did a hundred episodes of or 50 episodes of or whatever. Uh, tons of episodes of this. So I've got lots of great podcast episodes for you to listen to. I've done about a thousand shows overall. I had an AM radio show called The Booker Report for uh, 120 episodes until I said a bad word on the air. You can find that uh, wherever um, radio shows are played. Um, and uh, I got my homepage of the website, robbooker.com. And if you click on free indicator at the top of the page, that will, there is no product for sale on the other side of this. Uh, I have some friends and partners. You can sign up for their newsletters and I would encourage you to do that. However, there's nothing for sale. I will contact you eventually when I have something special for you, but um, I'm just here today to tell you that I care about you, that I'd like to get to know you better. And you can download this indicator um, absolutely free and you can install it for all of those platforms that you see at the top of the screen, plus others that aren't even listed there. And the indicator is free. I am not an expert in Ninja Trader or TradeStation. So if you have trouble with those platforms, you got to know those platforms. But the indicator is available and it looks um, just like you saw on the screen today as we worked together, except on Thinkorswim, in which case it looks like a bunch of arrows because they don't let you draw lines on Thinkorswim charts. Uh, once again, it's been a pleasure to know you and to meet you. I hope you'll stay in touch with me. If you want to, if you want to get in touch with me and you want to know more about me, or you want to ask me a question, I've got my phone in front of me right now. And this is my phone number. Do not call me at this number because it is my phone and I will not answer the phone for you. But if you text me, I will get it on my phone and I would love to hear from you. You can text me 24 hours a day. This is my number. I am the only one that answers this. The phone will be in my hand. You can ask me a question or say hello. My number is 304-281-8332. I've had that number for a lot of years since I lived in West Virginia. 
Um, you can text me at that number, 304-281-8332, and you can say, hey, I met you in the webinar, had a question about what you do. I'm always happy to hear from you. There might be a delay, but I will be the one that responds to you. And I've been uh, really grateful to the folks at Trading Wins for having me here. Thanks so much for sponsoring this Saturday morning event. And uh, I've been real happy to be here. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Rob, Saturday. Bye listen, uh, I would like to thank you as well, but you've made me coffee my keyboard about three times because of your presentation. You're going to be laugh out, <laughs> laugh out loud so hard. I didn't realize divergence could be so exciting. Um, and I, I, I have to give you full credit for your uh, German present, uh, pronunciation of uh, Schleiser Franken. And I'm going to raise you Osterleicher dollar. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Is that the Australian right. dollar? I can't tell you, this was really good. Really <laughs> enjoyed it. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us and for bringing a little bit of uh, of a light heart, a light hearted presentation to a very serious topic and the topic itself, really engaging, really well done. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Have a great day. And the same to you. Enjoy with the children. Okay, bye for now. That's it, Vince. Another uh, spring kickoff done. Yes, excellent. Hope uh, you all uh, enjoyed it. Thanks for being with us. And uh, as we said at the beginning, it will be record. It was recorded, and uh, we will be sending that out. Uh, hopefully, what within? Well, the latest on Monday. Monday. Yes. Yeah, the latest on Monday. We'll try to tee it up as soon as possible and get it out to you. All right. And uh, Stephen Hawking, rest in peace. Didn't say anything about spring not happening next year, so we'll do this again next yeah. year, uh, spring 2019. We'll look forward to that. We will have a summer kickoff as well. Uh, I see lots of comments. Win, uh, thank you. Always a pleasure to have you. Win, you, thanks so much for joining us here, and I see you as well. Thank you. Uh, Rob, Trey, Young, uh, Galad, Michael in Ottawa, nice to see all of you. And uh, folks, if I didn't mention your name, it's not because uh, we don't appreciate you. We certainly do. It's just we've got quite a few people on, and we want to thank you for making the time uh, to join us. Vince will be back with his regular nightly update tomorrow evening. For those of you that were asking, the links are all in the chat box. So we have tradingwinds.com slash splash <laughs> slash spring. We have uh, bctnow.com slash credit. And that's for Dave Aquino's presentation and tradesmartu.com slash special for Jeremy Whaley. Uh, Rob Booker, I don't know if he handed out a uh, link or not. If he didn't, we'll sure. get that for you. My apologies for that. Vince, last comment. Uh, you know, uh, thanks again. I, I, again, um, I wanted to say, if, I mean, my, my uh, members, my followers have heard me say this before, but uh, this is going to be a very interesting year for the markets. I expect volatility to continue. I expect it to be a very active market. Uh, so there was some great information in today's session. Uh, pick out the tidbits that match your your style, and uh, and always always test things out before you uh, you want to go ahead and try it with real money. But uh, there's a lot of good content. I'm glad you could be with us. Uh, the recording will give you a chance to review it again. Uh, as many times as you like, and uh, let's take this market uh, one day at a time. It should be another interesting week. So thanks again, everyone. Best protection strategies for someone to use over the next three weeks. I, you know what, I really, I hate to say this to traders because they always have the itch to trade more. But at this point, trading a little less is probably the best advice I can I can give you. But as always, trading is about finding that one. One or, one or two things that works really well for you. Uh, and it doesn't mean it's going to work exactly the same in every environment. Um, and if you have that one or two that works great in this type of environment, great, by all means, use it. But as I mentioned at the start of my presentation, I think we're, in a time, we're at a time now in the markets where it should be more about protecting what you already have than thinking about how much profit you're going to make over the next week or two. Um, the breakout, the official breakout uh, of those February highs and lows will happen and it will probably happen as early as this week. So you won't have to wait very long to get back to being very active. But I think now, uh, you know, the more restraint um, you can use, I think the better.
off off your B right now. All right. Before we go off, uh, before we go, we do have a bonus trivia question for Vince at the end of every session in our market chats. We always like to challenge Vince with a trivia question. Vince, you ready? Oh, I wasn't ready for this, but I guess I, I have to be. And it's your hockey. This. It's your wheel. <laughs> All right. right in your wheelhouse. All right. Wayne Gretzky, obviously, is the lifetime or career leader in assists, 1963 of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who's number two? Is it Ron Francis, Mark Messi, or Ray Bork? Oh, assist? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Ron Francis. Ron Francis? All right. Michael no. in Ottawa, what do you say? He's, he seems like he's a hockey, bit of a hockey fan. Messi. Oh, he says Messi. No, you're right. It is Ron Francis. Yeah. Surprising. Uh, 1,249. All right. We do have an insightful poll question, which we also like to do at the end of every one of our chats as well. Your opinion. What's most likely to happen first? Dow to 30,000 or the Dow to 20,000? Ooh. Interesting. It would be great to see the results of this one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, this is where those breakout levels come in. Um, and we're sitting right around, what is it, 23.5 or so, or close to it. Am I right? Uh, let me just go back. Yeah, 23.533 on the Dow. Um, I, I'm going to not not say it until you close it, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna make it more fun next time. I mean, the Dow is at twenty three five three three. I mean, the next question will be, what's more likely, five three four or five three two? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am going to close off the. Let's see how one sided this was. Go ahead. Well, there you go. So 20,000, 79% of you think 20,000 will be hit first. Uh, I agree, not just because it's, you know, it's a lot closer to 20,000 than 30. Because, I, I, you know, we could turn in and get to 30 in no time. But I'm just seeing a lot of signs uh, lately that are, are giving me reason for concern here. And... Uh, Unfortunately, I think we will see 20,000 first. Um, the thing is, what worries me more than anything is that if we do see 20, then we certainly see 18.5 and most likely lower. So fasten your seatbelts, as you, they say. Would your answer be different if uh, the question was 25,000 versus 20,000 first? And if we do see 25 first, does that mean 27 is more likely? No, not necessarily, no. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, yeah, 27, I'd, I'd feel a little more comfortable with 25. Um, I'd say we're still, uh, you know, in, in the chop zone and we haven't really resolved anything. But um, I think this week is going it, it, to be a big week. I know I say that often uh, recently, but uh, it will. I think this week is going to be the week where we break. So stay tuned. He's Vince Vora. I'm Raul Aurora. Nice to have you join us. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. These sessions wouldn't be the same without you. We wish you a terrific Saturday, a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Take care.